And just so everybody knows, we are recording. I think we just went live. Okay. I don't say anything bad about it. <laughs> <laughs> She was really talented in graduate school, and I just don't know what happened. Did say the thing about you? That's on the record. Uh, and that's <laughs> on the record, too. Good job, Julie. Good job, Julie. <laughs> <That's awesome. laughs> it's three o'clock. Yeah, let's see. Did they hear me? I don't think so. We just said something too about it going stuffy. Mm -hmm. So it may have just hit that temperature that we're going to turn it off. Okay. And it should still be cool. Right? At least it's not freezing. That's very true. That's true. Last mm -hmm. month it was kind of chilly. Yes. Yes. I mean, yeah. It's great. So if you both, we can give us permission to dinner a couple more before we start, or we can get going with the session. Here he comes. Commissioner Skinner, can you please try to be on time? I did pretty good there. <laughs> so we are live. This is our graduate, so maybe we don't want to say how much we doing if we just come here off. <laughs> um, we'll go ahead and call to order the September meeting of the Victorian Village Commission. Our next business meeting will be Wednesday, September 29th uh, in the same room at 12 noon. And our October hearing will be Wednesday, October the 13th, 4 p.m., also in the same room here. Uh, so we'll go ahead and introduce staff. And Claire and Kimberly. Kimberly Bernard Cheeky, Assistant Historic Education Officer. You can swear to tell the truth. I do. Yeah. Uh, introduction of the commissioners. Uh, my name is Kevin Sullivan. I'm Jeffrey Hissel. Sean Tyners. Tim Skinner. Excellent. Uh, so we do have a quorum here today. Uh, overview of the hearing format. Right. So city staff shall present the application. The applicant and or owner shall be sworn in and present any additional materials if needed. Registered speakers will then be sworn in and provided three minutes to speak each. Commissioners will discuss the case and then ask questions if needed. And please note, staff expects the goals themselves, members of the commission, applicants, and public to conduct themselves in a professional manner for the new witness for the day. Thank you. Uh, any updates for uh, COVID protocols? Obviously, everybody's masked up and separated. Yes. So the update is that masks are required within my leave all city buildings, but certainly this one. Excellent. And then, uh, do we have any public comments today, or is there anybody here needing to turn in a public uh, comment slip? So no public forum. We will have speakers for eleven thirty-five. You know, but since that's at the at the end of the agenda, I don't. Expect we'll have people sitting here the entire meeting. Yeah. And we're fast. I have a hard stop at six. Okay, as long as we still have a quorum, and then we get jump the angle for sure. Yes. Uh, approval of uh, the staff approvals. So moved. Second. Second. Further discussion? Any vote? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? If anyone has to abstain from any of them, please email me. Yep. Makes sense. Uh, and then uh, approval of the minutes from uh, last meeting that we're including in the packet. So moved. Second. Any further discussion? Vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Excellent. Uh, with that, we'll move on to application number one. All right, our first application is UV 21 09 0 0. This is for 23 West 2nd. The work 
The new gun is proposed to be done is street trees have been updated and detailed facts on the Gabra and bike ramp have been supplied. Commissioners at the business meeting asked for clarification regarding the bike ramp thinning and whether it would have a powder coat page or if it would be painted after. The uh, commission requested to see it, the elevation of the fencing. Staff has added materials uh, found from a previous email regarding the dog fence and bike ramp. And those materials have been attached to the out. A staff does recommend approval of the application with any modifications or clarifications made by the commission. The basis for that recommendation is City Code 3116.13, these standards for site improvement. You guys can go ahead and say your name for the Jessica Sharon. Ben Schilling. And do you swear or affirm that the testimony you will give will be the truth? I do. Yes. Awesome. Anything to add to the uh, staff report? Um, Kimberly may have mentioned it, but the only other item that I think of note is what, which is why Ben is here in case we have a question. Uh, we had to switch the street tree grades from a curved um planter to the typical street tree grade detail by the city sorry we didn't mention it really um and that's just based on the width of the sidewalk the city did not approve our curved um design that was when we were going through a uh, street construction plan it's the comment just came up so that was after we of course came to you for landscape but otherwise white racks they're the u shape they are powder coated black dog fence detail elevations now included um and then increased tree, cal tree calipers to inch to three inch. Those three items were from the landscape meeting that we just had to come back for. Yep. Through the um, the city journey process, uh, the switch to the grade, did they recommend any structural soil or mitigation for root growth? They did not. It's it's per the uh, the city's downtown streetscape standards, uh, which is a just a four by four or five by five. The, the standards do recommend uh, kind of a volume of soil area utilize the structural soil. So I, it is something that I take into consideration. I I want to say we have that in our plans for our landscape plans, and Ben's our civil engineer. So I'm happy to go back and confirm it. Okay. But I don't want to promise it. You know, promise that we have it and it turns out we don't. But if it's recommended, we're gonna end up doing it. No, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Thanks, Bill, and everything. Well, you did mention the bike rack color confirmation. Do we have confirmation on the fence itself? Because I think that's that's where the conflicting note. Is. Oh, it was on the fence. Yeah. The fence is a powder coated black as well. Okay. Right. Right. So do we want to do a motion for uh, 21-09010, 23 West 2nd Avenue as submitted? So moved. For a second. second. Uh, any further discussion? No. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you much. Thank, Thank you, guys. Thank you. Much Thank you. appreciate it. Likewise. Thank you. Number two is CP 20 20 And this is for 201 and 203 West First Avenue. The application originally included variances, a front porch, and carriage house, and rear porch. And it has been split, so it makes a little bit more sense for what we're reviewing today, which is the proposed new carriage house, which would be to construct a one and a half story in car carriage house at the rear of the property. Staff has included the commissioner comments from the October 14, 2020 Victorian Village meeting. Uh, commissioners at the business meeting requested touch sheets at the proposed siding, as well as of the doors and overhead doors to be here. 
commissioners requested photos of the home and contextual photos showing adjacent properties. Uh, commissioners noted that some of the color windows shown as we cut sheets did not seem to have the correct proportions. Uh, additional photographs were provided from the applicant, and the Historic Preservation Office staff checked the file through a two story three car garage that's along Trace Gallery, also associated with 208 Wilbur Avenue. And I did want to note it was a non historic structure, which was approved in 2014 COAs. And HPO staff does not find this structure appropriate because it does not fit into the historic context of the alley. And previous staff was not able to give me any insights as to why it was approved. And the 1921 to 1951 sample map shows that any garages that were along this alley would have been single story. Staff does recommend approval of the application condition that all requested parking sheets are submitted prior to condition of a certificate and that the garage is reduced in scale to fit into the other historic garages along the street. The basis for recommendation is the city code 3116. Follow these standards for new construction. And so what's up? <laughs> it's okay. Uh, you go to make the record. Uh, Juliet Bullock. And uh, do you swear or affirm the testimony you're going to give will be the truth and nothing else? I will. Do you have anything to add to the? Uh, I'm the um, I looked at the window order. You can't go by those little pictures on the window order. It's they're not to scale or proportion, basically. They're um, you know just stop once they throw in there. So you have to go by the proportions of the windows. That are on the drawings. The size was correct. It was just the graphic was incorrect. I thought we had approved this before, to be honest. Um, I, you guys saw this carriage house, I think, three times, and we mostly focused on the front porch that was part of the front building, and you didn't seem to have too many concerns on the carriage house. So that probably could be. We have a little bit of change yeah. on this commission. <laughs> So that um, that was my recollection, but <laughs> you know, this is an alley that has, it actually has a carriage house directly across the alley from this proposed carriage house, and this is one of those alleys that actually has two-story residences. Yeah, after I reviewed it, I was wondering. It, it didn't jiggle my mind, but it looked very familiar. Yeah, yeah. so th there's a lot of precedent in the street for, for what we're proposing. And we are demoing the existing three. I'm sorry, I can't understand. Are we demoing the existing three car garage that's there? There's no garage. There's no there. Okay. So the images are just showing that one there. So that's the adjacent property? Yeah, that's the one that's across the alley. I do a little bit of dialogue for the specific. We had to get variances and all that for this carriage house. Yeah. And so you guys, that's not you. <laughs> you guys have any other discussion? I don't actually. No, I don't. No, I don't. So, do we want to make a motion for? Uh. Yeah. Was that here? That was a produce. Oh, this is the previous one. Okay. Yeah, okay, can you do this, Sean? Because I'm yes, off. That's not a problem. That's yeah. not a problem. Yeah. Actually, back here. here. Okay, I'm here. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, application 20. <laughs> no, it went back to this thing. Can you saw that Go ahead, Sean. I'm making a motion for application VB 20 10 020 C um, for, let's just say, 
for item B, which is the carriage house, um, as submitted with the conditions that uh, the balance of the product cut sheets um, will be shared with staff for review and approval um, prior to COA being issued. Second. Any further discussion? Uh, vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank, Thank you very you. much. No, he okay. pointed out that it was an example. It was the number right up there. <laughs> no, <laughs> Thanks for the same. I know I saw it doesn't there. <laughs> so now I know. All right, application number three, CZ 21-07-021. This is for work 84, the one I'm requesting. Proposed work is to replace existing siding of the on the rear section of the building and install consistent max siding data and replace uh, siding with the James Hardy. Four inch smooth, and we will decorate ground features to that. The existing window trim for the submitted documentation. Jeff has included the minutes from the July 14, 2021 hearing. Commissioners at the business meeting asked if the window at the easternmost bay of the north elevation on the left side is existing, um, noting that there looks to be an extra window on that side. I believe I boarded along a photograph. For this property of that build in window. So I believe that is the window in the front. I also have other pictures. Yeah, thank you. You see, you got that today. Sorry, it was yeah. short notice. No, I think it's the day of the hearing. I can't go in. Yeah, I understand. Yes. Here, yes. But I did get the people yeah. yes, so they know what I'm talking about. Okay. Uh, the commission also requested cut sheets for the proposed windows, which I typically, Jacqueline. Was amazing when she sent all the feedback out for me. But I typically call them cut or product sheets occasionally with windows. The window schedule is what um, helps us see what the dimensions are, with what the existing opening is, and what is the that opening. So that looks be the case here as well. Staff does recommend approval of the application with the condition that the window in question is confirmed to be an original opening. Basis for recommendation is City Code 3116.11. Standards for alteration, and we will get you guys sworn. Oh, okay. Yeah, you both could say your name for the record. Patrick McCarthy, Chair Fuller. You swear from the testimony you'll give will be the truth and nothing but. I do. do. Thank you very much. So, uh, anything to add? You know, yeah, to just uh, it's very it's very tight space, so some of the the picture photos are, are kind of difficult to project what's going on there. But um, the photo I didn't send to you earlier was a closer up of. That existing um, opening that is, is is boarded up. I mean, it's not an existing opening technically, but it is an original opening that was closed up at some point. Um, Patrick, the owner, had stated that many years ago there was a fire or something associated with that. So some of those things had changed there. So the goal is to put a new window in that opening. I don't have a uh, a cut sheet or a schedule because I don't have a formal measure on that opening as of right now because we haven't opened it up yet. Um, we're still waiting for you know approval to be able to go forward with the work to be able to to get that stuff, you know. Um, but we are planning on going with just uh, a large textual series wood windows to match the you know that it's only approved list to match the the look of the other windows that we have. So could we make so that's just an odd situation <clears throat> there to the left but do you see to the right where you have those two windows above one another yes and, and what happened there was um they look really really tight on the uh are you looking at the uh well i was thinking can we do that on the left sorry what are we looking? uh it's page seven This is page seven is the see see this lower oh yeah sorry let me open that up. so do you see how these these are different but they're a lot at least the line yes and we do the same thing there and, and honestly that is a that is a uh, design 
uh, flaw of mine. Um, just I'm not an architect. It's just in-house software that we use for some of our permitting stuff. Uh -huh. So I was trying to put um, after the last meeting, you guys wanted an elevation drawing um, showing the depth of the different portions of the building. Uh -huh. um, so that's what we were kind of I was trying to put in there with that. Um, that window is 100% in line, and it, it, that other picture that she had that I sent uh, does show that. Um, unfortunately, for some reason, it wasn't allowing me to copy the same size window above it, right there below it, and I was trying to get that put together. Um, so yeah, it looks a little off, yeah. and even when I moved it to uh, the 2D, because that was the other part that was requested later, was to have a, just, a, just a 2D elevation so of that's it. That's what really caught our attention. Yeah, it, was just a 2D. Yeah, it looked like it was really, really tight, and yeah. it was because I was trying to show some of the um, uh, the crown details that are going in above the window, which I wouldn't, I didn't put on this one. So again, it, it's just a matter of some software uh, okay. technicalities with me. On I have better pictures if you guys. I just took today. I yeah. I saw it. I yeah, they're 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 having right this though. But yeah, that they're right, right above each other. I yeah. get it now. Yeah. yeah, I I don't have a problem with it now. Though. I just saw that. Yeah, kind of resolved itself. Yeah, yeah we can go through with that once I get the staff with a look at the window cut sheet. Yep, me too. So with that, can we get a motion? Yep, a motion for uh, BB21-07021-184 through 190 West 2nd Avenue. That's submitted. Second. Uh, do we want the uh, staff to take a look at the uh, <coughs> Yes, please add that. So, I'm sorry, can you just that up? Uh, for the applicant to submit the uh, final product cut sheet on the new window to staff for final approval. And is a window schedule okay or some variation? I think we just need to verify that it's product off the uh, approval list. Okay. Oh, okay. That's that's yeah. pretty standard. That's what that is email to them and they okay. Product, yeah, data, product data sheet and then we understand it. Yeah. yeah, so we can't validate yeah, yeah. it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, and I'm going uh, to give us the formal thing. We'll send that right over to I'm you. I'm contemplating putting all the windows in that building so they're all the same. So we pop that up for each sheet. Not at this time. Not, not, not at this time. time. Yeah, not at this time. time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're yeah. we're all going to move the one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, that's later down the road. Yeah, but the windows we would put in later would be the one. So with, right, uh, right. Yeah. yeah. That's fine. I'm familiar with that. We'll email that over once we get the measure and if we get the final quote back from the uh, manufacturer and everything. I want to confirm we are doing the back with the exact same section, or is the section going to reflect us there? I mean, that is And I was worried that I just stated something in the application, but we're okay. No, what we were worried about was that back being. One survey. Right, right. right. Yeah. That's yeah. what we were worried about. Yeah, there's no way for us. We have about a six to eight inch depth on the one, and then we have a full foot on the yep. other. And then that's, that's, what we want. that's what we want to see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We're maintaining all of that. Okay. Yep. Thank you. <laughs> it's on the wheels turning. All right. Sure, when I go back, I forget. Like, just have my notes. Perfect. Oh, thank you guys. Thank you. Oh, oh, we have a motion. You're not done yet. Oh, we, have an, we have an okay this thing yet. <laughs> We're just so excited. Peace. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Thank you very much. Thanks, guys. Thank, thank you, guys. guys. Number four, looking at staff approval. So we are moving on to number five, which is 3 8 0 2 This is for 975 Highland Street. The proposed work is to remove existing slate roof and gutters that have run haystack, install asphalt, roll, and the the Owen Department Station. There is a work on wood in the Cleaner Drive. I replaced the trim under the roof edge listing. The replacement will be in the southeast corner. Elevation will go from chimney corner and install five inch hay style in the tires and the Owen Central Barns West Chimney. Replace the skylight on the deck and remove it and replace the front porch fascia like color. This would be painted bad and put the shirt right back together. 
I have supplied the minutes from the August 11th. A commissioner at the business meeting with the most approved use of removal to keep the shingles on three sides and replace the shingles on the other side of the asphalt. And I'm going to say whoever said that has a fantastic memory. It was me. Fantastic memory because I checked the hard copy of the file and that is a COA from 1991. Yep. So, which was approved replacing the slate on three sides of the main house and replacing the I'm not, I'm not hearing real clear, um, but you're talking about the earlier decision 30 years ago? Yes. What year was that? Uh, this was from 1991. Mm -hmm. And I will speak up, but let me get through this and we'll throw you two gentlemen in. Yeah, I just, I didn't want all this stuff to go by me and I, I'm barely making it up. Yeah, thank you for letting me know. I will slow down and I'll speak up. Thank you. You're welcome. So, and so the COA, the previous COA is from 1991, which approved replacing the slate on three sides of the main house and replacing the slate on the west side and rear addition of the gray slate line shingles. This approval also included installation of the skylight on the south side of the rear elevation. And I did include that COA for commissioners to look at. Staff recommends approval of the application with the condition that the existing slate shingles be replaced for the slate assessment. The basis for recommendation is City Code 3116.11, the standards for alteration. Excellent. Uh, gentlemen, can state your name for the record. We'll get to sworn in. Garrett Vickers. My name is Justin Tyson with the contractor Klaus Roofing. Awesome. Uh, do you swear or affirm the testimony you give today will be the truth and nothing but? Yes, I do. Awesome. Yes, I do. Uh, anything to add to uh, staff's report? Yes, at least two things. Uh, I just discovered today that since the 91 meeting, I had had durable slate come in in 96. And I had totally forgotten that. And they replaced 150 slates in 96. I knew I had had slate repairs done probably around 88 to 90. I put the asphalt roof on. That was done at the same time. Slate in the front, the asphalt in the back. But I, I had totally forgotten that in 96, a uh, little slate did 150 slates. Oh, and the second thing was, I, had, I apologize for not doing everything strictly by the the way you guys do things. I have a really hard time sometimes working with technology, like sending files and all that stuff. It gave me a real hard time. But uh, I did send an email probably early August or late July uh, stating that when I learned that the gutters that we were installing, the K-style gutters uh, come in pre-painted colors, rather than use that celestial blue that I think is still on the application. I think you read that, I didn't hear all. Uh, more appropriate color would be autumn harvest, which is a couple of shades lighter than the siding. And that same, uh, not that same color, but yeah, I apologize for I'm doing this, I'm old school. I'm going to get a paint ship of this color for the uh, fascia, and uh, I couldn't get one, but I went ahead to slap some paint on. This is the color I'm proposing for the fascia. That doesn't appear in the application. Oh, it's called, actually it does. Is yeah, that the, the big? That's, that's the red mask. Red mask. Yeah, that's the red mask. All right, I'm going to take a picture real quick so I have that on file. Yes. Yes, for that way you don't send me anything. Let's do that. Alrighty, so it is this color over here. Yes. Okay, so. Thank you. You're welcome. This to make things easier on you. And I could also email you the link that shows the autumn part of our harvest color, or I could dash back up my car real quick and get a color swatch and show you as well. Forgot to bring that in. If the commission approves that, go ahead and send that to me. I'm making no promises. I just wanted that on there yeah. because we had it. It's case. about two shades darker than this. 
So another consideration Jared had the expectation or the hope was that the slate could go away and we could replace those with asphalt. But since the slate sounds like it's going to need to stay, that's going to reduce the project cost for Jared. And one of the things that he considered originally in the project was doing the GAF slate by the shingles on the whole house. The cost difference just didn't make sense from the three tab to the slate lines. So now he's considering going back and looking at the cost comparison since the slate is going to stay. Might he be able to afford the slate line, which is also a approved shingle on the shingle list? We just wanted to put that out there in case the application says he's going to go with the O Touring Supreme, but what if he ends up choosing JF slate line, which they're going with approved shingles? So I just wanted to discuss that. They are approved, and in fact, that's what's on there now. I guess. Right. So it would be a like for like shingle exactly replacing what's there now. I'm confused. I'm sorry. Okay, so it's I'm like, sorry. Guy from Bro, the you can you explain you just like to replace the asphalt shingles like for like? Well, the expectation from your guys' ruling based off of one red slate's slate assessment is that you're going to tell us that we need to repair the slate that exists there now. Correct. And not rip it off. Correct. The original goal was to rip it off and go back to all asphalt. Correct. So when the original expectation was we're going to do the whole roof, the GAF slate line was about five to $6,000 more expensive than the Owens Corning Supreme shingle. Uh -huh. And now that Jared's going to save some money by not replacing the slate, just doing repairs to the slate, he might consider doing the GAF slate line shingle instead of the Owens Corning Supreme with that, just so which is a positive. It's, it's, a, it's, a, positive, uh, it's a positive move. Yes. Yeah. We started to bring that up. That determination hasn't been set in stone yet, but they're both on the list. So we just wanted to talk about that. No, I think I think it's a good move. Yeah, I mean, it's a more historical looking change. A much yeah. better look. Yes, I like it too. I'm retired. I don't, I don't have excess funds laying around, so I'm watching my dollars. Understand that. Just a question: um, are, are the ridge rolls and things of that nature? Are the ridge rolls being replaced? Are the ridge rolls being repaired? So there's a plan through one red slate to do some repair, and then like so, for example, the picture that you have up here. Would you mind if I step to that monitor over there and kind of show you? Yep. So the separation between the slate and the asphalt is here. So we would replace this dip, this ridge, and that dip going back. Yeah. So anything where the asphalt meets the slate will get replaced with new ridge metals, dip metals, but all this out here will just repair and make it. Yeah. Makes sense. And then the porch, would the porch receive, uh, you know, the porch is going to receive New or would the porch receive new um, ridge roll? Yeah, so there ridge. is there is one hit right, right here. And that's a good point. Because want that to be ridge roll, that's no problem. It's currently shingled now, as you can see. Yeah, it, 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 it should be one, but it should be ridge. consistent. Okay. Yeah, just for consistency sake, right? Yep. Okay. Would we want the ridge roll on the balance of the property? For the reason, addition or just the front? The reason it stated that way is because uh, I forgot the gentleman's name, but the one red slate guy that did the assessment, mm -hmm. Stephen May. Stephen May. He recommended not pulling all that out. He recommended cleaning and three coats of paint for his fortune. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. That makes sense for us. Mm -hmm. I just didn't know if we had any thoughts on the balance of the balance of the addition to the rear. Like for like right now, whatever determination that was made in 91, it didn't take into consideration. It, it so really now it will, and it'll just match what yeah. they're doing, painting. That's good. Yeah. Okay, so all the ridge. Okay. Perfect. So if we could go back a few pictures there, please. There we go. So we want ridge roll on the back ridge as well. Yep. Okay. And that's just being consistent of what we typically would ask for, even though we went with you know, a shingle group, we still ask for the metal original. We're just trying to be consistent with today's offering. 
Um, like to make a motion for application BB 2108 uh, 012 975 Highland uh, Street. Um, let's see here. For uh, as submitted with the following conditions or following changes um, that this existing slate will remain and just be repaired for the slate assessment report. The existing ridge roll on the slate areas would remain and be repaired and painted. Um, there will be the, the existing asphalt would be replaced with either with either selection or either uh, say Owens Corning Supreme three tab in a state gray or the alternate ridge line product? Uh, GAF slate line. Slate line product. Because both of them are on the approved uh, shingle list. And then new ridge roll in a matching color, which would be that galvanized color, would be on all of these areas, all of the asphalt areas as well. So you say matching color. Are you talking tenors of red or gray? Tenors red. red. Uh, either it's either, but consistent across the board. Yes. We can discuss that. I don't want to go red or gray. Are you okay with that? Yeah. I would much rather have tenors red because now we're bringing it back to its original state, and it will be consistent across the board. Okay. I don't think it's acceptable to have any of that painted gray, even though it is gray now. Awesome. Do you? Perfect. Okay. And I think the contrast between the tenors red would probably help kind of play down. Bring it all together. Yeah, it would help play down the variation too as well. Okay. okay. Yep. Do I need to say anything? And I'm sorry about that. Do I need to say anything about some of the replacement of the downspouts, things of that nature, right? Because we just want like for like on those elements. That's right. I think we're fine. Okay. I just wanted to be sure. Okay. Second. <laughs> uh, any further discussion? If I've got two or three minutes, I, I do have a question of you guys. Just like to know how you feel about it. Sure. Mr. May said the slate was had been maintained. He said I would replace 40 tiles. And I called him and told him it appeared to me like I could easily replace a lot more than 40 of them because they look disgusting to me. All those pictures, I'd like to know how you guys feel about that. If it were your house, would you settle for 40 slates being replaced? Because every time I mentioned the chippings, like on the front where there was a lot of chipping going on, and when I mentioned the, I think it's fungus growing on the north side, all that discoloration and spots, he says, that's just old slate. Yeah, mm -hmm. I would listen to their recommendation because they're fairly good at what you need to do. But I would also make it clear to them that, you know, I have to keep this slate in good health. I don't want to be calling you every two seconds if something chips. I want you to take a good assessment of the condition of my roof. I know you said it was going to be 40, but I would rather err on caution instead of having to constantly look at them. and keep revisiting this and I'm sure you know they will let you know what that is. Sounds good to me. Because it is old slate, it's not gonna look perfect, it's not gonna be consistent, but it's gonna hold up if you maintain it. Mm -hmm. Well uh, we have a motion uh and a second. Um, any further discussion? Nope. Uh, vote all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you very much, gentlemen. Thank you. you. All. Thank you. Thanks, you guys. We won't be real. Thank you. I can't believe we pulled that one. Give me no time as well. <laughs>
I think they kind of clarified everything we had wanted to know, so I, I don't have any further discussion. So I guess I'll make a motion. There's no further discussion. Awesome. Make a motion for uh, BB 21 dash 08 dash 013 1079 High Street as submitted. Second. Second. Any further discussion? Uh, vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you very much. All right. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Have a good evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank so since we don't have applicants here for the, the 909 North High Street, I suggest we move on to the applicant that is here. Number 10. Number 10. Yes. Yep. Excuse me. I don't know here for applicants. Okay. Is that okay? Yeah, go ahead. I okay. I'm okay. here first. So somebody just needs to remind me what number we're on because I've already messed up my number. Yeah, so we're going to look at we're that. Look at no, he, he said it was okay. Yeah, go ahead. Make sure for me. That's completely fine. Okay, so, uh, so yeah, application number two. Okay. 217. No problem. So application number 10 is VG-21-09-014. This is for 217 bottles or 755 Denison. Um, the proposed work here is to install nine solar panels on the garage. The panels will be set back three feet from the edge of the roof with a max height of 10 inches. The power and other connections will be penetrated. And this installation is being proposed north of the previously approved solar panels I did include that COA for reference. Commissioners at the business meeting wanted to know if there is a difference in the substructure from the previous approved panels. A scaled measured section drawing of the solar panels was requested. Commissioners wanted to see the relationship of the solar panels to the parapet at the north. And a scaled measured roof plan showing the location of the additional panels was also requested. The previous the approved panel should also be included. Additionally, commissioners requested additional photograph from the corner of Hunter and Buttle Avenues, which was uh, submitted, and the applicant did confirm that the substructure was um, the same from the previous approval. Staff recommends approval of the application with the condition that the scale and measured drawings and plans with both sets of the panels are submitted to staff prior to the issuance of the certificate. The basis for recommendation is city code 3116.11 and standards for alteration. So my only question, okay. 
Can you state your name for the record? Jason Henry. And do you swear affirm the testimony of the paper will be the truth and nothing but? I do. So on page five, I see the hand drawn drawing. And so what time is this what we're looking at? Because page eleven just shows sort of a substructure for only one of the roofs. So are we looking at both roofs? We previously approved the south roof where that, this one. Where that is. Okay. Yeah, okay. essentially it's the same the same concept just pushed over to the other roof once we bought the other property. So it's the same structure. Yeah, same same, same company, same okay. panels. Same, yeah, the different the only difference is um, from my perspective is the parapet wall on the previously approved was 13 inches, where this is eight inches. But the, the panels are 10 inches, but they're set back three feet, so you wouldn't. So that, that's and the and the, the grade is into the alley. Okay. Uh, pretty, I don't know what I didn't measure it, but it's sufficiently steep that you wouldn't see it from the okay. backyard or the lower. Uh, and just one more question: Is it is it individual two by twos, or is it a field within that constraint? Like so, the the image that's being shown has kind of a series of you know boxes that are those representative of the panels themselves? Yeah, I mean, there's space in between them. Yeah. The, uh, the, the one the, the, the drawing that was on the previous approval, and I don't know what page it is, um, it's a little bit more technically um, probably appropriate than my little chicken scratch drawing. But yeah, it's it's their set individual panels is not a big large so solid array. Okay, so it's not a solid array. Right. Okay, perfect. Perfect. Understanding that just, 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 just for my own edification. Technologically, why would you separate them versus making them? I don't, I don't know. You don't know. I mean, that was the, you mean, as far as suppose one gigantic panel versus a bunch or just series of them versus by themselves spreading them up. Well, I don't know that my drawing is necessary. I mean, I tried to do it where I thought it would be. There might be, it might be a little tighter than that oh, okay. uh, to take advantage of, you know, my, my assumption is that they take as much, do as much surface area as they can being separate. Panels. Got it. Okay. <clears throat> Well, also into the Do they? Um, I have an issue here. Um, I don't know. Somebody want to make a motion? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Let me get back to back to the motion for twenty one dash four one. Dash for two seventeen Buttles Avenue as submitted. Second. Any further discussion? Uh, vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Like the uh, renovation's been coming along over there too. It's uh, it's getting there. We're still yeah. hoping to be in by the end of December. They just put the countertops in. Nice. You know, floors are done. HVAC's been running, so yeah, I, it's a working on the house and construction zone. I'd like, to get the, <laughs> I'd like to get the boom trucks out of there, but the painters and the masons should be finishing up in the next week or so. I'm hoping. Good luck, man. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. You are directly behind me. It's hard to see you. Are, is anyone here for 909 North High Street? Okay, so you said you were number nine? Uh, no, I'm number eight, 1141. Okay, are, are you okay with letting them go? Or yeah, go ahead. I mean, <laughs> I think we should let him know. He's been waiting at eight Yeah, we're kind of hearing things out of order, which happens occasionally. But okay, number eight. Yeah. You gave me a little bit of a palpitation because number nine is blue. I thought I was going to have to be quick on my piece. Okay, so this is number eight, which is BD 21 09 02 1141 Highland Street. Yep. A code violation has been issued for work prior to review and approval. 
This includes replacing the existing block and steps, and new steps have different risers that are different heights. Uh, this installed new limestone retaining wall, upgrading the existing front lawn, installing new lots of the new stone pavers, which are 24 inches by 24 inches from the front door to the street and backyard. And the existing concrete stoop veneered with new stone treads and limestone risers to make the risers uniform at seven inches. New landscaping also includes new plantings. Happy business meeting the applicant confirmed that this is actual stone and that they replace the risers to make their heights uniform. HBO staff appreciates the applicant's commitment to the unification of the front yard printings for future applications. All proposed alterations or repairs should be submitted prior to work being undertaken. So that eliminates the chance that any work has to be redone because it's not in alignment with the city code or the Jordan Village guidelines. Now, the yard originally was sloped. So my question to the commission is, is the retaining wall an appropriate alteration? This side of the street does not have much of a slope, so is the retaining wall needed? There is a steeper slope on the opposite side of the street, so there's retaining walls over there. And staff has noticed that the side fence was replaced. An additional photograph is submitted of that area specifically to show where the fence has been installed against the side of the house. And a scaled and measured plan should be requested noting all of the alterations. Staff does recommend continuation of the application to allow the applicant to submit additional information. Basis for recommendation is City Code 3116.13, standards for site improvement. And uh, we have our applicant here. Uh, if you can state your name for the record. Uh, Lucas Wood. Mr. Wood, uh, do you saw our firm uh, testimony of the truth? I did. Do you have anything to add to? Uh, Staff's report here tonight before we start discussing. Um, yeah, I'll just add there was a comment about the fence. Um, I did actually submit that uh, when I redid that last summer to you um, and was, was granted approval to replace the fence. Did you find any? I will have to look at the files. There were, there's quite okay. a bit, so I think I should I, look. But. may have it on my phone. I can check quickly here. If not, I'll, I'll have to go dig through my, my own files. That's okay. I'll look through mine. It might be a quicker access, but I don't have that on this computer. So what do you think, Tim? <laughs> uh, you know, I, in terms of, I think the question was about the, the wall it's appropriate in this. Um, I don't have an issue with like there's enough instances of that treatment throughout the neighborhood. It wouldn't be the particular stone I would necessarily choose to recommend, but I, I don't it being a natural stone product and it's what the realm of appropriateness. So I think the only thing that I would say from our past dealings in situations like this is, is that we would request some kind of uh, capstone to be put on top to finish it a little bit more than it actually is. That's That would be my only. Something similar to like what they did on the risers there in this code? Yep. The smooth top? Yep. Is that more so just based upon the size of the limestone that was used, probably? Yeah. yeah. That I just understand. That's understandable. That would really bring it in line, especially with the, the stairs that need to be. Yeah. And, and I also think that if we don't act on this, uh, we're going to have 20 million pictures coming in here saying, look what he did. <laughs> and he has this product and it's unfinished at the top. And now you're asking me to do a sandstone top, blah, 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 blah. So I think we have to be consistent, and I think that's the only thing that I would require out of this applicant. Okay, and, and to clarify, specific type of of top. This is my my father. Sorry, we we did the project together. Okay, uh, all right. You're late, Dad. 
Sir, if you could state your name for the record. Uh, Tom Wood. And if you swear for the testimony you'll give will be the truth and nothing but. Absolutely, yes. Thank you. So I was asking for the you you mentioned using uh, the classic plan capstone on top uh, specific type of material you'd like us to use blue bluestone uh, as you did reference on the risers. What do you think, Tim? I would normally recommend. Yeah, I do like the profile. The bluestone, no. I mean, I think the bluestone would look nice and it'd be consistent across, and it would kind of tie. What they've done on the median and all together. I mean, is, is, is that necessary? I, I'm only asking because of additional cost. Um, I mean, this is a Indiana limestone, natural stone wall. I'm saying it has to be finished on top. That's what I'm saying. So, but it is. It, it is not finished. That is not a top course of a masonry wall. Right. So, I mean, that's. That's fine. I'll, I'll, okay. I, we did it. We did it prior to coming to you guys. So I want to make sure we fix it. Yep. And don't have any issues. Anything else? It's, I think we should try to help them out with some thickness though. I don't think we, I don't think you want, you know, just from a coursing standpoint, is it? Is it two inch thick, you know, type limestone cap that we're looking for? Or just, I think it would, it would probably help. Yeah, just to give us some clarification. So yeah. if we do something, there's not a further problem. Right. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, we could also, we could take a course off and then put the cap on it. I mean, if, if that was beneficial for them, I think we should help them and lay out some parameters if possible. Just kind of. I don't think they're going to be able to renew the course. It's going to take you down more. Okay. The stair. I see some Okay, I, I like where you're headed, but I don't have any record. Okay, so so a two inch course or something like that. I, I think two inch, but I would I would match the thickness of the or, or as close as you can to the stair. Try to try to okay. It's kind of similar material to the stair tread. So the I guess the other variable is the, the width of that. Which how how wide are the a lot wider than is the uh, the wall block eight inches, which is how deep. Um, I'd say probably five inches. Like width. What's the size of the wall? Three by eight by twelve, roughly. Stairs are a twelve inch. The treads. Yeah. Yes. Two. Two inch on each side. It's it's too strong. That's too wide. That's too strong. That's too strong. <laughs> I think that's the challenge here is, is finding a reasonable product to have that all it's matching the stair. What would we be looking for, like no more than one inch over any? So, like a 10 inch product? Or do we want to subcommit the cap? That'd be perfect. That'd be helpful to that, you know, they could go ahead and I think to provide some options. Yes. So we'll so work with you on. As long as they're okay and I have volunteers, I'm okay. Because sometimes the subcommittee can take a, a little bit more back and forth than everybody wants. That'd be it. Awesome. Well, then can we give a, uh, a motion with the uh, subcommittee clarification? Um, a motion for BV 2109 012 uh, 1141 Highland Street. Uh, a motion approved as submitted uh, with the understanding that uh, a cap will be added to the existing wall. Um, and that cap, those options will be reviewed in a subcommittee consisting of Tim, mm -hmm. Kevin, okay. and I'll, I'll add myself. Okay. And so, 
Okay, and just for some clarification for the applicant, what happens with the subcommittee is you'll send me the requested information. In this case, it might be okay to send the commissioners no more than three of your options for a cap, and they can provide feedback or approve a specific one. Yeah, it's not a specific, it, you have range. Understood. Yes, and you'll submit the materials to the Victorian Village Commission and then I'll forward it to the subcommittee. If there's any comments, I will give that back to you. And if it, there's no comments, I'll get the approval. Yeah. And and just to clarify, I think that I think that the team is reacting to not necessarily the materiality, it's just the size of the stone that was used. Okay. So that's so the size of the stones are smaller units. If you probably would have came to us first. We probably would have asked for a larger unit, you know, three, two or three of those, you know, kind of as one. As one sure. And we might even steer you away from even doing a wall. Right. That's this That's, work is done. It was not approved. There okay. aren't walls on that side of the street. Yeah. So this is a. There uh, aren't for our, for our online side. There's good. So that's all. I just want to make sure that this, I, I know that the gentleman wasn't here at the beginning so that's what i was just yeah I, I appreciate that and, and again i do apologize that's understand and just for the record since you stated there are no walls on this side of the street what are our reasonings for approving this just is just outside the normal guidelines and code so i'm putting them on the spot that way if somebody else comes back with somebody down the street did this you know we want to do the same thing um what is the uh, train of thought here well, I would I would go back to legal and ask them within that parameter because I we don't have that in front of us right now. We had Jack before, so if you want to go down that road, <laughs> that's the road we're going to have to go down. Guidelines and stuff, but it sounds from the, the discussion that you might ask to take it down a row, but that would work out with what steps are. So the right. is it's kind of the best course of action as opposed to sort of all the way down previously is, which is what the agent project. Yeah. So the plastics and everything are contained. Yes. All of those, all of those factors play into the decision of why we are being considered a late existing. And just putting a finished cap on. Yeah. It's not changing it, just putting a finished cap. So we have a motion, do we have a second? Um, second. Uh, further discussion? Nope. Uh, vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you very much, gentlemen. Thank, Thank you, John. Thank you. Know, you. On the fence, were you going to do anything like that? Um, if you could send me a quick email saying that for the meeting, we're going to look into this, all I need. I'm making a note too, but if I see that email, it's going to probably get done a little quicker and I can get it back to you and feedback. Okay, we'll do. Thank you. 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 The downspouts and exterior side doors of the uh, canning, the canvas awning and gutters, the tricolor black, and to paint the sun gutters extra white. The commission noted that the brick fabric is important and painting is not an appropriate treat for the unpainted brick following code and Victorian village guidelines. Staff reference approval with the condition that the unpainted brick is not painted. Basis for recommendation is City Code 3116.11. These standards for alteration. So, uh, can you state your name for the record of applicants? Maya Candela. Mike Barton. And do you swear from the testimony you'll give will be the truth and nothing but? Yeah. Okay. Do you have anything to add to uh, our staff report for this current discussion? I guess I would just like to make clarity when you say we can move forward, but not paint the brick. What does that? What are you approving? So the other items that you requested in, so that would be uh, 
can be downspouts, exterior side door, it can be turned on, but the canvas awning and the gutter, as well as the sign letters. So one of the reasons why we were requesting the painting is the building has multiple finishes. There's actually stucco, brick, some exterior block. We were hoping to get a more cohesive feel for the building by putting the paint in a color to sort of bring everything together versus having all of those different finishes. We understand that painting is not something you guys commonly do, but with this being an older building, we feel that the paint would actually bring up the standard and the quality that you guys actually are looking for in the area. And and I would be a proponent of uh, uh, signage and that stuff. That's what we're going to focus on. A lot of these buildings, uh, the the sort of flavor of the day is painting them dark kettle gray, 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 painting everything out. Uh, and what we're seeing is, is for like this building, um, it would bring more attention to the building than actually making it more consistent. I think that, I think the building as it is today goes away. You don't notice it with all the materials that are going on. The minute you paint it a homogenous color across the board, it's going to stick out. Which is ultimately our, our goal. Oh, I, mean, that, I, am, so I, I understand so we that. We don't own the building. We operate our business within the building. And it's a retail sort of business. Um, it's a by appointment destination. So it's not like some retail. Um, so we're just trying to bring it up to our brand standards, really, uh, and making and giving it the, the, the cleanliness and the look and the sharp and, you know, a, a building that's in good condition. And it's a building that's not in very good condition, frankly. Uh, and that's what happens when a lot of brands come in here and say, this is our standard brand. You're in a historic district. Uh, a lot of times you can't do what you want to do within the district. And that's sort of what we're trying to yeah. So and that's and that's why we're here. I mean, that's mm -hmm. and it's fine if you it's, if you choose to not to, to not allow us to paint the brick. Um, that's fine. That's that's why we're here to ask that question. Mm -hmm. uh, we're not going to paint any of it. I mean, we're not going to we're not going to invest anything in the exterior of the building otherwise. So it's really a, that's why we wanted to make the ask that if we're going to invest in it. We want to do it all. If we can't do it, then we're just it's fine. We'll let leave it to the landlord. And let it continue on its path. Got it. If that's the if that's the ruling, we don't really have much show where to offer. We we believe it's you know it improves the fabric of the neighborhood given the the buildings that are in the immediate surrounding, uh, both new and old. Uh, the building is frankly an eyesore. It doesn't fit you know the standards of either the city or Victorian Village with regard to its general appearance and maintenance, and we're trying to improve that. Um, frankly, for our own benefit as a brand, uh, but we also believe it doesn't detract, but rather improves the neighborhood. But again, we'll just, we're, we're good with whatever you all rule and decide, and we just wanted to make sure before we did anything. That and I think, I, you know, to be fair, I think developmentally, that's a missing tooth, and sooner or later that lot will be developed and that building that will not be there. Yes, sir. Yeah. Which is our hesitancy, like we can't, that's why I say so I can't do it, and what does that be? Understand that. Yeah, the permanence of the paint too is, is my concern. And if, if, like, we know the building eventually is going to be torn down and redeveloped, but if we start allowing the painting brick, where does that kind of lead us it to can go. In that permanence of it yep. in, in terms of the preservation goals? And I get their perspective also. Yeah, I, I also understand that. As we do yours. That's <laughs> yeah, why we wanted to make the ask. Sure. So what do we do? Um, I mean, we can approve the signage if you want us to. The painting of that. If you do decide to move forward with that. I would like to have it so that if we would decide to do that, we don't have to come back. Yeah, it gives you easier. Uh, I think 
think everyone's on board with that. Yep. Yeah. Uh, can we get a motion? Uh, motion uh, for uh, application VV-21-09-011 for 909 North High Street. Uh, approved as submitted um, with the understanding that the um, other trims and, and awning relevance, you know, items that are noted uh, will be acceptably repainted, uh, but the uh, existing brick uh, to not be painted per staff's recommendation and per 3116. Second. Further discussion? Uh, vote. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, any opposed? Thank you very much. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Well, since we're running a little bit ahead of schedule, yes. uh, I would suggest a quick break since there's no one here. We do have a we have a number of other ones to get through though. Which I do tell the applicants they should be here twenty minutes half an hour early in case we you know do pick up speed and um, apparently not everybody has time or could get out of their work. So will we have a quorum when I leave at six for the rest of the as long as nobody else leaves. Okay. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just saying. And for future meetings, I don't think everyone can say we pull that because sometimes these can get rather long pleasure agendas. Right. I'm going to be right back since uh, we have. Okay, just as long as we remember to um, turn that back on. Because if that's not the case, I'm going to need to listen to audio in one of the conceptuals and I'm not going to be able to. Oof. So you are turning the mic off? Yes, well, the video is still on. Yeah. So once no one gets up, you will notice when it's muted, it blinks at you. So it's kind of saying it's in standby waiting. When it's solid red, it's on. So if you ever notice this blinking at you when we're talking, please let us know.
And third, they march themselves. There's Neil and third, and then there's uh, Neil and fifth. Neil and first is Neil and first. And then it goes back down and you think Kelly, you get some bits of puppets. Mm -hmm. And then it's in his own big ass city of traffic. <laughs> well, supposedly, because in my uh, Short North Foundation meeting yet last night, they're going to have radar or some fancy thing that's going to be able to. Uh, the game day or make the flow of traffic more consistent or something like that. West Lock even did a similar program like that right before I left. Did they? For Purdue, the game day. So you had one officer and they could flip the switch and then Instead. picking four lanes. Wow, in nice. You could move 60,000 people out of there in a relatively short period. So it's going to cut into that there over time. <laughs> what makes it work? Yeah. I haven't been here yet for a game, so I'll be interested to see what I Saturday brings. It, uh, this will be an interesting exercise. I'm glad for it. Yeah. I think we'll be in. Yeah, that's what my dad told me. Oh, so the, the other thing is, is, did you read about that kid when? He gave up his senior year. Oh, the high school. He might not even play, but it was in the first four weeks. He's racked up one point eight, one point five, or one point eight dollars. Oh, is that oh, yeah. that's like making more than the coaches in your pocket. He gets pretty sweet deal. It's a pretty sweet deal. He's sitting on the bench, man. Um, save my arms. <laughs> Thank you, everybody, for your participation. I just sent out a quick email to everyone who is agenda item number 10 on the table that we are going to try to schedule. I realized two of you were already here, so I apologize for the duplication of that. Uh, I'd be even more happy if things were the current conversation. All right. So, You're here for agenda item number 12. Sir, what agenda item are you here for? I'm checking. It's for 135 West Second Street. Okay. Perfect. Here we go. All right, so we've got the next two items. So we'll take um, agenda item number 12 and 104 West Hubbard first, and then we'll take the other dental. And I'll just combobulate it because I'm taking stuff out of order. So, agenda item number 12, BB 21 09 016 104 West Hubbard Avenue. This is the conceptual review to replace the existing HVAC equipment, including the air conditioning. Mount the new HVAC unit on the flat roof of the 1975 edition. The exact unit will be determined later. Commissioners at the business meeting asked for screening information to be added regarding the visual impact. Commissioners wanted to know final heights. They know that this is a conceptual application, but knowing the future height of the HVAC units um, at least would not exceed would be helpful. Commissioners could offer design feedback that can be utilized at a future hearing. Basis for recommendation is City Code 3116.11, these standards for alteration. We'd like to come up with these for you. And Commissioner, please make sure all ever go microphones are on. Can you state your name for the record? Ben Williams. And do you swear from the testimony you'll give will be the truth? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, do you have anything to add to uh, staff's report? Um, discuss. Only that, uh, as requested, I provided additional information that identified the equipment to be seven foot, seven inches or uh, shorter above the existing roof level. Um, with that additional information, since the, the business hearing we provided a concept elevation, um, identifying uh, product data for a, a 24 gauge um, Kynar finished ribbed uh, screen wall system. 
that would be installed on the lower roof uh, to conceal the equipment. The idea is to, to essentially um, make that screen wall uh, right around eight foot tall. So it would be higher than any of the mechanical equipment yeah. um, that would be on that roof. And as Kimberly correctly stated, we're still in the process of selecting the equipment, but um, we are confident that those heights are not to exceed number. And it's going to be the and your the color is sandstone. That is our plan. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's perfect. Now, with that, we also have identified some potential locations on grade for equipment. These would be on the north side of the building. Um, in the in the follow up information presented, they are shown as a red box with potential alternate equipment location shown. I will say at this time, we we recognize that there are some some real structural challenges with the existing roof there that um, our engineering group is looking at. I think it is highly likely that one of the pieces of equipment will need to be moved to grade. So if there's any feedback that I could get with regards to screening that equipment, whether it needs to be a, a similar system or if there's a different fencing system that could be implemented there, recognizing that Columbus City Schools is on the budget. So this, this view on the screen right now, um, you can see the dumpsters over on the left. That would be one of those alternate locations on grade. Um, the other one would basically be between the two doorways that are there. I like it tucked between those two doors actually in that corner. I, I do too. Um, the only issue that it may present for the owner that we need to work through is that is their food prep area on the other side of the door on the right. Might be too noisy. Well, not only that, they they have, you know, um, the food and just things that they need to bring in through that door yeah. pretty consistently. So there, there may be a space constraint there that we'll have to overcome. For the ground amount of equipment, you would only be looking at one location, not utilizing both. More than likely, it would just be one. And I also see a potential to make it a smaller unit. I'm not to get overly technical from an engineering standpoint, but one of the roof mounted pieces of equipment we showed could be split into an indoor and an outdoor unit. And if we did that, I have seen a potential for something smaller going outside. Well, I mean, what's really interesting about the picture that you presented to us. It'd be nice if the school system not to, you know, load some stuff on, but just a dog-eared fence that incorporated the dumpsters and that unit would be ideal. Okay. Off to the side, incorporated in just a six-foot dog-eared fence with a gate on it, and I would call it a day if you're going to put something on the ground. Yeah, I think for the ground mounted stuff, just matching the normal fencing yep. guidelines would be great. And it's best it's, it's on that side of the lot too. Mm -hmm. But for the uh, the screen wall on the roof, I think it was yeah, appropriate, well selected. And, uh, I'm happy with that. But yeah, on the ground, the ground piece, if that's going to be constrained, I would just do a dogwood mm -hmm. fence enclosure and incorporate the, uh, the garbage stuff too. For, mm -hmm. for the roof screening, with that, the Elevations may be long because there's that step back for you indoors there. So would the equipment actually wrap around? Yeah, if you see those two red, see where they say kind of. Oh, I see the top. No, you see here it wraps around and covers. It's like two two L's on either side of that building. Yeah, ideally we could avoid that other east west projection on the skinnier part of the roof or the monumental part, but with the way the equipment's laying out right now, yep. we see a need for that to be there. Yeah. Is the is the sandstone color that's been selected, does it match the coping that's on that kind of interstitial space? Uh, kind yes, of I believe so. We're, we have an architect working with us who, who okay. felt that that was the, the match with the, okay. the coping, as that's well right. as it meshed with the brick in there as well. Perfect. Perfect. That has metal coping. The rest of it has stone. Awesome. I don't think. Is there anything else? Anything else we guys want to add? 
Uh, any other questions you have for us? I, I don't think so. The only other part of this that could come up in the future is we're we have to upgrade the electrical service for the building. I don't know if that's going to necessitate a transformer on grade outside the building, but I've I've heard what you've said about the other potentially great amount of equipment, and we're trying to follow. We'll try to follow suit there if that ends up being required. At this point, I'm just not sure. Okay. Does uh, the service entry kind of buy the backside of the dumpster area? No, it's not. Building? Unfortunately, it's okay. it's kind of in one of the alcoves out the original building. Uh, on the Wilbur Road. So well, I think we'll. I think we'll, we'll just have to deal with that when it comes. Then sure, yeah. figure it out. Yeah. Now, um, as far as procedurally, we'll put through an application for approval um, that has even further design details shown. So on that Wilbur side, see where the building goes. What is that sort of structure in that bay? It's like a like a shanty or it has a door. You see, he go over, it's on page seven. You see? Is that a container? Yeah. What is this? That is a, I'm my understanding it's a storage shed where a lot of equipment is stored because there are flammables that have to be kept out of the- Because it could be, that's where it transforms something. We, that's that's one of the options. That would, that would get rid of that shed and I would- We even we even thought, is there a way to get HVAC equipment in that area, open the top of it up to provide airflow, but it's just not large enough. Yeah. I'm sure they don't have a permanent janitor in there. It's kind of- No, but th that, that area shed. of the building is where we would look. Yep. Of course, that has to be coordinated with uh, the utility as well, so. Yep. So let's make a motion. It's conceptual. Oh, it's conceptual. Okay. Uh, so yeah, uh, next round would be a further level of refinement for details, uh, find location of the, uh, the equipment, and then for ground on it, the dog ear defensive would look good, and then stream off for the rear that would just look great. Okay, and you said the dog gear fencing is defined further in the, uh, the guidelines. It's yep. in the Victorian Village guidelines, right? It's six foot. Yes, yeah, so the dog here, the back side goes in, so the next side faces out. Yeah, okay, straight forward. Which some of that is in the specifications we use for staff approval as well, which I don't think is yet spelled out in the guidelines. Oh. Hopefully, whenever they get revised, might be in the addendum. Possibly. Well, if you have any questions, you can always call. The office and they'll set you on the right path. Thank you all for time. Yep, thank, thank, you. You. thank you. Thank you. Have a great evening. All right, do we want to go back one and try to do number 10 then? So, just to confirm, number 10 Denison is here, correct? Just over here for a moment. Okay. Okay. I just saw new faces walk in and I don't recognize everybody, so. And then it looks like we are moving on to agenda item number 13, the 135 West 2nd Avenue. And if, um, if everyone would like to come up and get settled while I'm talking, I'd like you to do so. This is application BB-21-09-017. This is a conceptual review to construct an addition to the existing historic house on the east and south sides. This will include a new rear two-story porch and to construct a new carriage house at the rear of the lot, remove the wrought iron detailing and add wooden columns to the front porch. Replace existing siding with the pattern on the floor siding, and addition of marine colors noted there. Replace existing asphalt shingle with Owens Farming and Estate Gray. Replace window with the Pella Architectural Series with windows. Entry doors would be true style and painted with your Owens color listed. Existing gutters would be replaced with the aluminum OT. And patio paper with the emission tumbled. Um, and the bench in there with the brown flash. Uh, 
Commissioner, that the business meeting wanted to know what variances would be needed as part of the project, including lot coverage. Contextual photos would be helpful, especially in comparison to neighboring homes and structures. Uh, commission, there's noted uh, that the applicant needs to look at the guideline and consider multiple variances. And siting assessment of the main house is also needed. Commissioners should offer their design feedback to be utilized at a future hearing. And basis for recommendation is City Code 3116 from the standards for alteration. Uh, if you go to all statement for the record. Yes, hi, my name is Scott Harper, Harper Architectural Studio. And with me is um, Vita Farwana, Tariq Farwana, who are the property owners. Excellent. Uh, do you swear that the testimony you give today will be the truth and nothing but? Yes, I do. Yes. Excellent. Uh, anything to add to uh, staff's report before we start discussing? Um, I would like to add that we did, were able to actually um, look at the existing siding that is on the house. And there, the siding that is on the house right now is covering the original siding. The original siding is actually a ship lap siding, and we have a photograph of it here from the house. To, if you'd like to see it, the um, additions that are proposed will require a number of variances, uh, uh, including the lot coverage. Uh, the carriage house would actually be a majority of the variances because of the nature of the carriage house. So we would have a total of eight variances. I could list them individually if you would like to hear them. I think that'd be helpful. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Uh, the variances would be 3333.02 to allow a second dwelling unit, which would be the carriage house. 3333.09, which would be the lot width from 50 feet to 37.5 feet, which is the existing lot width. The ARLB district requires a 50-foot lot for alterations. 3333.11 reduced the lot coverage of 2,500 square foot per dwelling unit to 1,900 square foot per dwelling unit. And again, that's because of the carriage house. 3333.15 to reduce the total um, building coverage from 50% to uh, allow 55% coverage. And again, that is related to the carriage house, not the addition. 3333.16 to permit the carriage house to be constructed without fronting on a public street, which would be Second Street. 3333.23, which would reduce the minimum side yard on the east side of the property from five foot to three foot for the addition to the home. 3333.24, which would reduce the 25% rear yard requirement to construct the carriage house within two foot from the alley lot line. And 3333.49, reduce the required parking spaces from four to two with the additional volume. Any questions? Thank you, sir. And I'd like to give the owner a chance actually to talk about why they purchased this property and what their intention is for it. I think that would be a very good starting point. Uh, so we live in the suburbs and um, we have two grown children. They don't live in the city. And um, in some ways, I feel like even though we're becoming empty nesters, our family size is shrinking. In some ways, it's probably growing because they come in with significant others. So we do want to. Uh, we don't want to. We want to live in the city, but there's really, uh, when we were looking, there's not a whole lot of product for us available. There's a lot of high rises and a lot of like older homes. So we decided to get one of the older homes in a great location that we like and kind of take it, uh, make it kind of like with, that fits my family lifestyle. It's going to have a master well, a master bedroom on the first floor. It's going to have plenty of room for the, um, for our children, and then the carriage house is going to serve as a guest uh, house for when we have visitors. So, um, um, a little bit more information about the house that I think is very pertinent. The house is really a relatively small footprint on the property. It's only about 700 square feet for the existing house on the main level. 
And um, even though the addition may seem large, it has only brought that up to about 1,684 square feet for the footprint, um, which I don't think is actually a very large footprint for the street. In fact, I think the house at the distance is one of the smallest houses on the street. And uh, for a record, it also has um, almost the same configuration of the property that is immediately to the west. They constructed a rather large addition up to the east property line, I believe about two years ago. Both of those houses, by the way, have hipped roofs. So uh, Vita's house has a hipped roof, and that's about a three and a half, 12 inch. And um, the adjacent house actually prior to the addition was very, very similar. You can see that actually in that photograph, the back of the house also has a, um, a rubber roof lean to the structure that uh, you see the metal stairway leading up to. The head height of that is actually extremely low. So that back room is not really even usable for a proper bedroom. The intent would also be to remove the chain link fence on the front of the property and then the, the uh, stairway in the back would no longer. The materials we selected actually <clears throat> For the siding are intended to be a uh, basically a shiplap wood siding um, smaller than four inches in compliance with the guidelines and um, and really in keeping with the original siding of the house the siding that you see there is not original although we believe we found a photograph from the late 1950s that showed that that siding was there as of 1957 but the original siding, which is underneath it, we don't have a date for that, but it's actually a shiplap with an exposure of about, I believe, five inches. So the intent would be to reside the entire existing house. And the house is actually not in very good condition right now through the fault of, you know, her husband. Um, they purchased the property intending to move in. Silent, so that will be the first one to speak. Um, I see the application. I understand what you're trying to do. Um, what we're having issues with in the neighborhood is the amount of program that people are trying to put on lots. And so if we come in with eight variances, we're starting to say, hmm, this isn't overlaying suburbia within uh, urban environment. This is really about loading up a lot. I'm, that house has been on and off the market. Uh, people have tried to do a lot of things with it. Um, but I think my biggest thing is, is some of the details on the front piece. I'm not so crazy about, but I think the real capper is the size and what the carriage house does to that lot. If you take what happened to the West, which is comparable to what you're doing, and then place a carriage house right behind that, you basically, it, your lot's on steroids. So that would, that's my only comment. I don't know how anyone else feels. Yeah, I was just trying to count the number of bedrooms and trying to understand, and, but, which is understandable. Uh, I mean, I think that, I mean, you're right in terms of program. I think a lot of times we try to allow for the addition to sort of speak receive and and it's really tough with the amount of program for the addition. It's it's hard to it's hard for it to receive. I know it's stepped back from the existing from that perspective. So I do appreciate that from a massing perspective, but it's 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 still a lot of program as it relates to the existing mass. So the carriage house and uh, it's at back of the house, which is a row of garages. It's not really impacting the view of the neighborhood at all. The main street has the placing of the houses. So the carriage house would be like pretty much looking into whole street of garages. So it would be a garage back to the garage. 
And that's under, understandable. Um, and I think, like, you know, looking at photographs, uh, contextual photographs of, you know, that particular area or those, the alley, we try to understand uh, a lot of times from a massing perspective on carriage houses or the appropriateness of a carriage house or a garage. We like to look at the existing massings, adjacent properties, things of that nature. Even the, the, the alleyscape is just as important to some degree as the, the streetscape. So uh, being able to have some of those photographs in terms of being able to make a relationship between those elements will be very helpful for us uh, in the future. Um, the other is a lot of times from a, from a sleeping porch standpoint, uh, it, it just, you know, you know, right now we have the kind of we have the one story porch on the back and then the two story porch on the back. Um, and trying to understand, you know, those, that relationship against the carriage house and just, you know, it may be helpful to kind of, you know, almost like you have a, a site plan or floor plan to be able to maybe offer us a, a side elevation. And you start to understand that, you know, we're really packing a lot, sort of speak on, on the lot from, you know, from the alley, sort of speak to, to uh, second end. Yeah, some of the, the rear coverage items kind of start to concern me too, as as already pointed out by the other commissioners. I mean, we're, we're 12 feet in between the two buildings with the with the porch. So the backyard is non-existent uh, after that. And then yeah, with the extra side yard uh, variances and things like that, uh, I definitely am starting to get a little nervous that there's a lot going on in the lot itself. Um, so, uh, looking at the addition in terms of scale, bringing that back into more compliance, uh, obviously some of the variances we just can't get around. We don't have 50 wide, 50 foot lot level or wide lots very often here. So I understand the necessary need for some of those. Um, the, uh, and then. I think some of the language for the addition recessing it back to kind of let it stand out um, works fairly well. Um, but yeah, I, I, the the lack coverage I think is the biggest one that I'm concerned about. From the front of the house or the carriage house? In just the entirety of the lot. Um, I mean, in the back, you know, we're going to be. Uh, I believe you said 55% building coverage on this lot. Right. Like 50% is allowable. Right. Um, and then, yeah, the, uh, the distance between the carriage house with the backyard and the paving that's going to go on back there for parking. I, I would just like to see it uh, scaled in a little bit more. I think if you look at the house next door, there pretty much going from, they're on almost on my property line. So they have extended the entire footprint of their property. And we're, we're allowing it a lot more than that. The reason for the uh, variance for, from five foot side yard to three foot is really due to the placement and the constraint of where the house is because that two feet is actually very critical in getting the bedroom sizes um, on both the first and second floor. And then in terms of um, also just massing in the alley, I know that was an important discussion. I believe there is another carriage house that's under consideration right next door to us right now. I'm not sure if you've gone through a conceptual review for that yet, um, but it'd be interesting to see. What I don't think we have. We do not post it at the address. I mean, that's too outside. Okay. That's all kind of have to check files. Any other uh, comments for I don't really. Any other questions for us? Um, 
in the conceptual review? So in trying to make this work for them with a decent program that they need, um, if we could reduce those number, the number of variances uh, and add the back porch and see if we can improve that yard um, and, just, and, and how that looks, it would, would that be something that would be uh, considered? I think it would be just kind of just thinking about the program perspective and addressing some of the comments today, I think would be the right step, you know, forward. Um, you know, for us to kind of, you know, review it uh, again or a second time. Um, just, just kind of thinking out loud, you know, instead of starting with the program is, you know, how do you start with the minimal, you know, what, what those requirements are and can you address balancing out the program with those, those requirements? Okay. But then uh, obviously taking into consideration some of the some of the comments that were offered today would be very helpful. You know, and I think that the front elevation is is worthy. I think it's fine. I think it's how the building mass extrudes just straight back mm -hmm. and continues with the carriage house yeah. and then the 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 double porch. Yeah. I mean, we just wouldn't see something in that in our vocabulary like that. So yeah. if you look at those things, we will absolutely be open to discussion. Yeah. I think one of the, the items that we touched on is being able to have a composite elevation to be able to, you know, it is right now, you, which is understandable. But I think in that evaluation next time, I think the composite elevation would be helpful to see the home and how it transitions to yards and then how it transitions to carriage house. the carriage house. Absolutely. I think that would be helpful to the discussion. Yeah, we can do that. Thank you for your time. Because I mean, it is basically a variation of what they've done next door. So um, front, I think, is 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 a good solution. I think it's just the rest of. I think the next door is. Um, if you look at it, it looks like a multi-family. They have two separate entrances. I think we're mm -hmm. definitely trying to keep the integrity of a single family home. That's yep. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good evening. I think we'll take a step back now to nine ten ten ten. Step back step two. All right. So application number 11, EP-11-09-015, on 10 Jefferson Avenue. This is conceptually for the construction of a new second and new third floor addition to the existing one-story demo office to make these structures two and a half stories and emulate the scale of a single family home. The first floor existing brick is to remain in the property which can be zoned from the ARLT to the AR-0. I've included the units from the August 11th, 2021 hearing. Commissioners at the business meeting noted that the proposed addition looks like a carriage house and that there were multiple dope regulators going on. It was suggested that perhaps you're losing the structure rather than modifying would be easier. Commissioners understood wanting to maintain the existing office. Uh, commissioners commented that the design does not address the deformity in the neighborhood. They recognize the revisions have taken a look at scale, door approach, and can provide additional feedback at the hearing. Commissioners requested a 3D drawing from the corner's perspective as it may help clear up the relationship, and they wanted to know if the proposed design would require any variances. One. For one to 145 West 2nd was noted as an example from addition to an existing structure. Staff recommends commissioners should offer design feedback that can be utilized by the applicant to further refine the proposal for review at a future hearing. Basis for recommendation is City Code 3116.11 standards for alternation. Uh, in our applicant, can you state your name for the record? Heidi Bollier. And you can swear, be swear to our firm that your testimony today will be the truth. Yes. Thank you very much. Do you have anything to add to uh, our staff report? No. No. Um, I just know, well, I guess just that I know that during the administrative meeting, it was mentioned um, potentially just removing, you know, removing the existing structure and starting over, though she runs 
a company out of this structure that's been running for, you know, that's been, that's, yeah, established and shutting the business down and starting over is not an option. So, dental offices are not inexpensive to replace. Understood. Totally understand that. Um, I have a hard stop, but I'm going to stay for this so we can get some direction going. Okay. Um, the premise of trying to replicate a residential home or a commercial building, I think, is the wrong direction to go altogether. I think you have a commercial building on the corner, Mr. Phillips building, and you're on the other corner. And I think that if you would if you if you were a larger entity do you mean the architecture the apartments on the other corner yeah it's a commercial building it used to be a store and an insurance company it's just on the, on corner, the corner of price and denison yeah we're not at price we're at denison and third well you're on the other you're on the other you're on that corner it's residential residential and apartments it's, it's just, it's just the address. I think we could just make an address which is different. That's okay. But you're you're talking about the right one. Right. Would it help for one of us to pull up Google Maps? Yeah, that'd be great. But yeah, there's just residential on the two single family, and then the other one is a so that structure. That's the that's the structure on the other end of the block. Can you pull that up to show that building? No one is working on that. Okay. So here's your building on the corner. Okay. okay. Now, if we go north, right, residential, residential. Right past that gray house on the other end of the block, which is the bookend to your property, is a commercial building. Used to be a store, used to be a storefront. There, are, can you see it? There. So it addresses the corner, it addresses the street on each side. That's what we were trying to get across when we were talking about your property. For example, the new uh, Giant Eagle site, they're not going to be able to utilize the parking lot as they see it now. They will have to pull the building up to the standard to the corner and the parking is behind it. So there's a whole bunch of things going on with your site with the thought that this thing is going to stay here and we're just going to make this thing around it. If in fact we're going to make that thing around it, it really has to change and it really has to be special if we're not changing the condition of the site. I think that's the best way to say it. This is none of the conversation that we had last month. Um, I, I'm sorry, I wasn't here. I have a hard so stop at just, six o'clock. Because we've waited an entire month and now this is more design feedback that we weren't given at the first meeting and we weren't I, given at I'm, the I'm, I'm sorry about that. This is. But we were trying to focus on, the, you know, maintaining parking standards, which right now, with how we have a design, we still maintain enough for the two apartments, plus the commercial, the business that's there and maintaining parking. So if we're coming all the way up to the edge of, like, basically the sidewalk, the, the corner, then we're losing all of our parking that's behind the structure. It's a completely different structure. I mean, I, I understand that. Sorry, I wasn't part of those conversations, but just as the last applicant came in, it was, a, it, was a, it, was a, it was a discussion about variances and what you needed to make the parking building program all work. And there's a lot going on with turning a little gas station into a bigger office and apartments above it and all these things while keeping that footprint the in place. The office isn't in the 
everything above it is much larger. Right. So there's we're adding apartments above the existing business use. So uh, other comments. Yeah, I think that, and then she's also trying to. I think that one piece that's being added is the the addition to the front, which would basically serve as the vestibule and the entry to the second floor. I think that's the only piece that's being added on right now to try to maintain the, the parking. I think as, as she's referenced. I, I mean, again, I <laughs> I know that we looked at um, you know several different sort of speak massing strategies uh, to try to. Uh, at least evaluate, and I think that there was some some synergy related to a flat roof so like so kind of solution um, because of the amount of roof and and some of these advancements are are have, have tried to address some of those elements, but I don't know if you've really been able to address the kind of understanding of the corner and the presence of this building and its view or its presence at the corner. We never spoke at the last meeting about the presence of the view and on the corner. Like we did speak about the flat roof that we had given as a conceptual at the last meeting, but everybody had agreed that that wasn't the best direction to go from the other conceptual ideas that we had provided. Yeah. The balancing of the finestrations, all of those items, the last time I think if I remember correctly, it was a lot of windows, a lot of punch windows, things of that nature. Uh, it seems like all of those items have been responded to, but I think this this to to Jeff's point is it, it seems like there should be something special about that entry and about that massing of the entry piece is being added. And it seems like it's almost secondary uh, in the current massing to the balance of the rest of the home or the balance of the rest of the proposed addition. It just seems very secondary, and it seems like that would be the first piece that have would have. You know, the most oomph, so to speak, um, you know, in the design. It's just that's that's just my interpretation of of, of what I see. I think maybe two separate things and it's like to one the, the commentary would be, I think the ideal situation we could be preferable to the level of understanding of the situation in terms of being able to see the business. So ideally this is pushed out to the street to complete that. Can you speak up? So I'm sorry. The, the ideal, the ideal situation of being on the corner compared to parking back. So balancing that with the need to maintain the business. Um, so I think maybe I'll, I'll push back on the rest of the group. It's just you know if, if those are the conditions at hand, I think we still need to. Address that corner. You visually address that corner. We we did ask last time, and, and you provided the view that shows from the corner, so we can get a better handle on what that is. That that is really really important. That, that regardless of location of you know how close you are to the street, that that still has to achieve the, the right goals for the aesthetics and, and addressing this as a as a business, not not as a as a as a residence, a traditional residence. Yeah, and I would echo pretty much everybody else's comments. The 3D drawing, I appreciate that. That does help visualize kind of more what we were looking at from the corner, uh, but it is lacking some sort of addressment to to that area. Um, I like the. Uh, I didn't think about the uh, insurance building further up the way. Yeah, we were, I was more focused on what was directly, you know, adjacent to this property. Not necessarily a building a few like you know a few well, I think down architecturally you have a corner and yeah. you're on the corner and then you're on a block and you're a bookend to a block. And they get that unfortunately it's an existing structure that's already there. So we can only do what we can do. Correct. But you're supposed to take clues from the context within your neighborhood. I would rather see a almost straight extruded building that replicates across the street the row houses than this building that's trying to build mass but it's trying to build mass with suburban vocabulary i mean that's a complex roof 
And it's even very if, similar to the other roofs that are on the structures in that neighborhood. We've studied them all extensively. We've been working on this for over four months. I, I'm sorry to say that. I'm just telling you this is my opinion as a commissioner. And visually what I see, programmatically what I see, the vocabulary to me is not uh, Italianate. <laughs> I don't see anything on there that's Italian. The, for, the vertical siding was a recommendation at the last meeting based on giving it some verticality instead of going horizontal siding. So we did use a little bit of horizontal siding, but we did use vertical siding and spaces to create some more verticality of the structure as a recommendation that we were given. And I complete, you know, if we want to make like the exact structure, the new structure, the two story structure that's on that west side of the existing building, that's the vestibule for the dental office, along with the entry for the two bedroom or the two apartments up above. Like if, like if you're open for that to be a very, very modern structure, um, you know, the, the owner of the owner would be very open to that. Just to change how that feel is. But we were just trying to maintain that the remainder of the structure because too we went it was basically a flat roof on that structure just based on our last meeting. Just to set that apart further from what the rest of the structure is. to the low houses. So what's interesting, not that this is not that this vocabulary is spot on, but it's it it's probably more in the direction that would be more successful and probably cost effective if uh, a little time and effort was put into it. So, so, for example, if you're saying the front of this building, this is what I see on Denison. Correct? Sure. Okay. So, this structure, boy, I get it. That dormer, boy, I get it. But it basically looks like I've taken the whole sleeping porch and covered it, and I've taken the whole front porch and covered it. If you would see a typical house on Park or any of those with this central dormer, you would come down and see a series of windows. And then here you would see a porch, most likely off the front of it. So I think this has potential if it looks more like a sort of a, a blown up version of a typical elevation of a house you would see down here. My only thought process with that is when you're looking at it from okay. third. So and so then what I would say is is this or from first avenue this, that this. it's like there's two separate front elevations. So then it's still like where's the well so that's 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 that is the key to turning the corner. That's always the trick in architecture. How do you turn a corner and how do you address both conditions? And maybe that happens with something that addresses the center and turns the corner for you, and then you have this elevation. So on High Street, it and on High Street, when you look at um, North Star, there's a bay on this corner that fades square building, extreme square building, but on the corner, there's a bay that comes out and it turns you around the corner. Front's the same, side's the same, it's that corner that addresses it. So I think those are the kind of things that we need to start looking at 
if in fact that's the massing you want to stay with and that's what you want to do. Does that make sense to you? No, I'm a little lost. Hmm? I, I'm a little. I'm just, yeah. So if you should never have a side elevation that has protrusions. Well, no, if, look at look at North Star and look at buildings. The down, yeah, yeah, look up. And you'll see a bay that basically is on the corner and it's not on high street. It's not on third or whatever that star is. It is basically facing the intersection. You don't see it at the ground level. You see it up above and it turns the building. So it makes a corner state. You see it all the time. You can walk around downtown anywhere and see that that's a move that's classic in urban architecture. Do you get that shot? Yes, sir. I do. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. So I think that's I think that's why the team was asking about the 3D view because the 3D view starts to help understand what's being conceptualized in 2D. And it really kind of draws emphasis because I mean this building holds the corner, even though it's not necessarily addressing the street or right up against the street, it still has to hold the corner because it it does have two elevations. So, you know, from that perspective. No, and again, as far as materiality and things of that nature is at first, I think the feedback to you was try, try not to do so much. Right. Mm -hmm. And then you got to a point and we just didn't want to necessarily, however, you address massing scale. Let you sort of speak assign materiality as you see appropriate. I mean, from that perspective, so um, whether it's vertical siding, whether it's horizontal siding, where it's more brick. You should uh, define what you feel is the most appropriate to help balance out the proportions that you're currently wrestling with. Okay, so I just wanted to make sure that's clear. Yeah. Okay, just wanted to make sure. Okay. But no, at the first meeting, we were told not to use so many materials. So we came back last meeting Understood. and used less materials. And then we were told last meeting to use additional materials to break it up. Well, maybe so we're just being told, like, understandable. We're just giving mixed been given mixed directions about which where to go. So I, I would try to clarify for maybe my my comment related to materials. Um, so with this particular project, I think we identified that it was going to be challenging from a massing strategy standpoint. Yes. It's, it, this is a is a tough project mm -hmm. to pull off. Um, so we said, hey, maybe it's beneficial to take a couple steps back in order to evaluate massing and, and such. With that, don't feel as though you need to assign all the materials right away to land on a massive strategy. Yeah. You know, allow that to build up. So I think that was the that was the premise of don't necessarily try to address breaking down the scale with only material assignment. If it came off as strip it back down, and that's the end result, that was that was not the end. That, that was not the intent. The intent was to take a step back. To try to help evaluate and balance out to kind of come with an appropriate massing strategy. Right. Um, as far as last, maybe last month's dialogue related to materiality, just wanted to offer that to you that don't necessarily take our comments verbatim and apply them because that may not just. I didn't. We, okay. Yeah. But so, so, like, just yeah. understanding what you were willing to. You know what you were willing to consider. Completely. Like that's where we were going because otherwise we had no design direction. And now we're going back to the drawing board again after four and a half months of working on this project. Well, I'm just going to tell you from a commission standpoint, many many projects have not been finished or even accepted within a year period, and that's not even some large scale. Project. So, I mean, sometimes it's a huge economic burden on my I, 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 I understand that. Sometimes it's seasonal. Sometimes it's the, the information doesn't come. But I mean, just because of that, it's not a reason to say this is okay. Let's go. To, to try to help address maybe being able to turn the corner, it may be that there again. I know. I, I know that. The client does not want to um, 
doesn't want the new work to kind of come into or affect the existing building or existing, you know, tenancy um, and, and operations. But there may be a need in order to balance this back out. So right okay. now everything is kind of grown on to. Uh, so well, and I feel like yeah. too the work that what we had designed in this with this round of revisions, we you know we were told it didn't need to be symmetrical, so we were just kind of playing with what was existing and what we were adding on to just kind of balance it, so they wouldn't have to make any like revisions to the existing structure mm -hmm. while still adding that new space. We're just yeah, yeah balancing it out. I think you have that other structure that's on the corner that's just north of there again. So we were talking about additional fenestration moving on the, the entry piece. So like you know, given the entry piece celebrated, so we would have more fenestration, you know, because right now it's it, it's kind of a that's your commercial kind of piece. That's your piece of entry for the doctor's office. Things of that nature. So it doesn't necessarily have to be all punch windows. And but even with that structure, you can see what's the front of the structure and what is the side elevation of the structure. There's not two front facades of that structure. So like, quite, quite frankly, quite frankly, the solution to your project is replicating that. That 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 enamel panel is the current doctor's office, which is a square brick building. What goes over that corner and addresses that corner is something that has that type of feel. And it's not hip roofs. It's basically this type of vocabulary. And I think it would probably be very successful if you could figure that out well, because we that split out to the corner. We lose all I'm not the I'm not saying I'm not saying it goes out to the corner. I'm saying that that type of vocabulary pulled back on the lot as you were doing. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, which which he's referencing is option C, which is the flat roof option with B. Which we were told that that was the least desirable option of what we had came to last month for conceptual ideas. I don't know what they told you, but I'm just telling you that's I have how we're supposed to balance board members being here and board members not and then having other everyone's here at the next meeting. It's just very challenging. I understand it's very challenging. Keep in mind not all the commissioners are going to agree. Which we're yes, so seeing. Sure. So right. it is a quite the challenge to balance everything out. And it's it's there are a lot of times where you know again the merits of what was reviewed at that time and the results of what those things are yeah. needs a shift. So it's not really fair to say that the linear path is ultimately the right path. I mean, again, I think when we started off, we really said, "Hey, you don't have to do too much." I think we got off on the wrong foot, right? Because you were you were thinking that this was going to be conceptual, so you thought that the application had to be enhanced, and you came with a very enhanced application. Well, we did question. because that was at the quest of administration. And, and we, that's told we needed materials, we needed windows, we needed roofing, we and, needed everything. And and not all I'm saying is I remember that, and I, I'm I'm saying that that was an apology that you got us to. So we kind of pulled that back and said, hey, you don't have to do that. You don't have to do that right away. We need to understand the massing, work through the massing, and then be able to kind of grow that accordingly. So. Um, again, it may be a pivot, but I think we are, it, it's definitely not a linear path from that perspective. And I think that we can only give you feedback on what we see. And the result of that is just, that was an exploration and that exploration didn't yield, you know, and we've identified a couple of things that may be challenges related to that option that you currently have. You may be able to tweak that option and be able to find a, you know, find if that solution works from that perspective. And unfortunately for like, the structure that you're showing right now on the corner, like that doesn't give them the square footage that they're looking for. For the two apartments above. <laughs> Without maintaining the parking that's there because they need to maintain the parking. For a zone. 
I guess I'm not understanding no, because it's that suggesting to modify the footprint oh, as, yeah. as, as you shared to this point. Right. I think you take the same footprint that you've been working with to this point and start to apply some of these principles in terms of addressing the corner, addressing celebrating the commercial aspect. You know, I applaud, I appreciate the fact that you've shown three dimension right now because that, that changes everything in terms of my evaluation of this property of this project because when you see those two static elevations it's really hard to, to to see where you're really seeing this from and it's from that corner so that that's really eye-opening it's helping us kind of evolve this this dialogue and this process okay but i just know that just being able to add a second floor to the existing structure is not going to provide them the square footage that they're looking for you're talking about the vert vertical correct need to go up beyond that yes yeah. Yeah, which is why we were looking at taking advantage of doing something similar to all of the residents and, you know, residential homes in the area and doing something with the hip roof so that we could take advantage of some attic space in those to get some additional square footage. And this is where we talk about. And so we're talking about a third story now that this which obviously changes the, the scale and the massing. Is there anything we can do from a, a direction standpoint on, on that notion? Well, isn't that one that you're showing me that there's two stories on top of that mm -hmm. single building? Yeah, it's two stories. So, it'd be so, so, I mean, you do, you're going in that direction with that schematic already. Correct, but I thought that you were just saying that we could do. That so, okay. you would prefer us to be with a flat roof on a two story structure similar to the well, but that so. The, the structure that I see here, can you see your structure? Here's your existing. Correct. And here are two more stories above that. Correct. And so I would, I would flatten off the roof. I would look at my details on the Phillip building. Maybe there's some bays on that corner. Maybe my windows articulated different. And I think we would be going, and I don't want you to take this literally, but I think we would be going in a positive direction as far as massing and vocabulary and what would kind of work within the parameters that you're looking for. Is that, is that helping or is that confusing? No, it's confusing. I don't know how we're talking about the vocabulary of going of this which is a two and a half story structure with going to a two stories, like chopping off the roof. Well, no, I'm offer. talking, I'm going back to your, you, this, the one that was unfortunately said, and I, I can see why they probably said it. Oh. That one is three stories. Correct. That one is much more like the Phillips building if it was blocked off and squared up and given more of a Victorian vocabulary of how the windows are articulated. And I'm, I'm telling you, it would probably be a much cheaper building. It would probably give you more program area and you wouldn't be dealing with, you know, the hips and the roofs and all that stuff. You'd have two floors above an existing I mean, it may, it may be a, a way to balance out and you may be able to get two apartments, you know, in the footprint of the existing. And it may not need the third story to some degree. But I, I don't, I don't know. I haven't looked at it in plan to understand because I know you left the plan, so to speak, slide. But I mean, it, you may still be able to achieve the square footage and, and the program that you're. Well, even with the flat roof, because the other still had a full second floor on top of the existing one story structure. Gotcha. So we need to maintain. We I have see. to create some third floor space in order to accomplish or to meet their program. Yes,
again, I, it seems like there's like this kind of it, like again, it is a problem. and I have to excuse myself, so it makes sense. So, okay, yeah. I'm just gonna move. Thanks, you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Any additional comments, questions from either side? Yeah, I'm just extremely frustrated that I feel like we're ending further behind than we were last month. So, okay. Thank you for your patience. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So we are on to our last conceptual, which is agenda item number 13, which is CC-21-09-017. This is one to the Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank Dash 21-09-018. This is 1106 Mill Avenue. If we have our applicant, go ahead and get situated, and I'll read this staff report off. This is the conceptual review to demolish an existing rear single story for East Porch and to construct a single story rear addition on East Elevation. The addition would partially be enclosed with an open porch on the north side. The proposed addition would have already lap siding with a five inch exposure, EPD animal frame roof, five inch aluminum OG gutters, more of an ultimate double hung wood window, and split faced concrete in the same foundation. The existing rear door and transom would be reused. The 1922 Bangor map shows the rear porch in the same location as the existing rear porch. In the 1988, the entire house had extensive repairs done, including the roof porch. That CLA has been included. HBO staff does not support the proposed demolition of the porch. The porch appears to be in its original location and has already been repaired once. The staff recommends the repair and replacement should be fine per City Code 3116.11, standard for alterations, if any type of work is going to be done with the porch. Commissioner should offer design feedback that can be utilized by the applicant to further refine the proposal to review at a future meeting. Basis for recommendation is 3116.14, standard for demolition, and city code 3116.12, the standard to construction, as well as city code 3116.11, standard for alteration, specifically to any line. And I will remind um, members of our audience, the mic that we have up here is really good at catching conversation, and we are live streaming this. So just an FYI, that if you don't want your conversation to be heard, maybe step outside. I know. Okay, our applicant, if you could say your name for the record. Brenda Parker. And do you swear or affirm the testimony you'll give will be the truth and nothing but? I do. Do you have anything to add to our staff report before we do stuff? No. Um, obviously, the, the client wants to expand the kitchen, and the place that the kitchen expansion makes sense happens to be exactly where the existing porch is. Um, So that's why we have proposed removing the porch and constructing an addition with a new porch um, on the north side. So that's the reason behind it, but that, that doesn't make it any better, I'm sure. Comments from commissioners? Yes. Trying to get more arms around this, I'm sorry, I apologize. Can we, you know, in the neighborhood, there's a lot of, you know, homes with, you know, single story additions from that perspective. And it, it, it's not necessarily 
it doesn't appear on maybe uncommon of one story expansion to support whatever that program may be. And then, you know, kind of a, not necessarily a celebration of the porch, but at least the, the, the porch is replaced from that regard. Um, is there a particular reasoning that, um, that this one would be, you know, I guess, of different merit? So I was going with the existing porch would be historic, or at least in the historic location. With the CLA, it should have been replaced in life, right? So they're maintaining that historic presence of the porch. Now that would be, as I scroll through all of this, the um, city code 21, 16.11, the standards for alteration. And if you do ultimately decide that you're okay with demolishing the porch, hang on to that reasoning there. Mm -hmm. And I'd have to check with the chair if we could allow a last minute speaker. Um, oh, we to the just needs to fill out a speaker slip. Okay, have those. So it seems like maybe they're separate. No, yeah, you can have anything with them. Okay, separate for the speakers. Okay. Nobody just used it quite yet, well, so you know it's there. Maybe kind of separate issues at play here. One would be the character of the addition being appropriate, but but maybe before that, if it's even possible based on demolition. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, you guys, I think you can me Scott to call our speaker up since technically they go before deliberations. Deliberations, absolutely. Yes. Yes, sir. Anyone wanted to speak? Yeah. Uh, if you could state your name for the record. Yes, Ken Whiteman. And you swear to affirm the testimony you'll give will be the June of the book? I do. Thank you for uh, preparing to speak for this, this motion. But um, this is a house that's about four doors down from mine. It's an identical house to mine. Um, I have a floor plan, and I know the reason for the needs here. And that's why I want to support the claim. Uh, my house was built at the same time frame, which is somewhere in the 1898 to 2005, the 1898 to 1905 range, as there's was. And the mine had an addition at an on about 19 a wood sided addition rear, very much along the lines of their proposal. And frankly, it makes the floor plan livable. Um, but at, at what I'm saying today is that it is a very appropriate proposal, the attitude. And I believe if I read it quickly, uh, they were producing signing material on it. And that also is what mine has uh, original signing. So I encourage the commission to support this plan. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I guess Tim, to your point, the historic aspect of it, I mean, I would hate to see something much larger get torn down from, from that. But, uh, you know, the rear of the house, it's not going to be a character defining item. Um, I mean, I know our goals are Preservation, but uh, you know the repairs that were done in the eighties uh, for the other COA uh, were pretty extensive. So that worked almost we almost lost it thirty years ago anyway. Yeah, I mean the addition uh, in terms of size and scale, I think is nice. Uh, you know for the. Uh, the kitchen area there, the, you know, the windows in the kitchen. Uh, I would just encourage you to maybe look at the proportions. I know we're going over the uh, countertops there, but they're those double homes feel a little squat in that three bank. Um, and I'm sure you're going to run out of head height room in there as well. Um, and then maybe bringing back some of the character of the original porch. If we look at the lattice railing um, concept and maybe some of the 
those types of new old posts in uh, might be a nice way to honor something that went away with some of those character details on the new porch. Yeah, I mean, my, my gut reaction seeing this is that I agree with you, the kind of just thinking about the scale of, of this porch structure for it to be demolished in, in light of the addition, which would seem of appropriate scale and meaning and function. Um, they, if it weren't for the, the, the cause of pause here of just you know, any kind of tone or setting, um, you know, I suppose besides the porch itself, there is looks like one window that would be absorbed or impacted by, by the move as well, or whatever that's worth. Um, just, I would echo, I would echo the comments amongst the commission. Um, I think that, you know, being able to kind of pull some of the detailing in, you know, from the porch, I think is a great nod uh, from that perspective. Um, it looks like the porch has been kind of over a series of years been repaired and some of that has been stripped. I think up above there's some preservation, but below it's, it's really been stripped. So just kind of trying to find those moments that are really true up above that can kind of maybe start to kind of play on to the character of potentially the the, the, the new porch that's being proposed. Um, window proportion, I think, is a big deal. Um, and, and a lot of times what happens with the countertops, the countertops are not at the exterior wall. I know the plan right now currently has the calendars kind of run the perimeter. And I think that that's really starting to uh, potentially constrain, you know, the, the, the ideal about being able to get the windows back in proportion. So uh, I'm not sure if the planning can adjust from that perspective, um, but, I would look at the amount of window as it relates to the amount of siding below it and the amount of foundation. Because right now it's they're pretty much kind of equal strata. Mm -hmm. And if there's a possibility to kind of balance that out, whether it be trim, whether it be, you know, just adjusting the windows, whether it be changing the floor plan, um, I think that would be a helpful improvement of being able to balance that elevation back out. But commendable in terms of it's just a, a small petite addition. That's why I had kind of paused at the beginning and asked if there was something here that we were maybe not aware of that was causing the staff to 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 mention that. So there the one window that we're taking out um, you can see it there next to the porch is not as deep as the others. Uh, and that has a, actually has a narrower proportion than the typical window. So do you think that um, narrowing them up, maybe not banking them together, like that's, in the triple? Uh, so possibility. It's just right now I think that the proportion of it is not as, you know, Victorian, so to speak, in terms of its you know right. height to width ratio. Um, you know, I think that I think the return squat was was appropriate. Would you guys be opposed to not having any windows on the south elevation? Where the range is? I'm not sure how you guys feel about blank walls. What's the site? I think we would have to look at the siding, meaning that the site itself mm -hmm. a little bit more to try to understand, but I mean, that's not that's so not that far. It's uh, are, like in relationship to the property line, or yeah. So it's nine. It's nine and a half feet off the property line. What's the depth of What's the depth of um, this building as it relates to the adjacent property? They're they're similar. Okay. So I think being able to maybe stretch the context out a little bit with the site plan when you come back to you know uh, to be able to just to be able to have those relationships, I think those relationships kind of help the dialogue relationship, you know, to, to where windows are and things of that nature. So um, whatever you're hearing today, don't necessarily just do exactly that. It's just I think that there's some things here that should be explored, I should say. Okay, so what I'm hearing is that um, the proportions feel a little off. They need to be adjusted. Got that. Um, bring some detailing from maybe the original porch into the mix. Are you guys okay with that? Because some commissions, you know, kind of 
they don't want you to replicate anything. They just, you know, want it to be known that it's new and it's you're not trying to to do what was there before. I just want to get the feel of where this board is in their views. I don't think that personally, I'm not asking you to replicate it, <laughs> but just okay. I just think that there's probably some cues here in terms of the character that could be that could kind of give you inspiration uh, in, in, in the detailing and the final uh, approach on the addition and the porch replacement. But, but, and I think my comment was kind of more along those lines too. It's definitely going to be something that's new, but we don't want to, if there is some nods there in terms of uh, especially the. Uh, Boards uh, above the like the beams. Yeah, the you know, um, I think they, they had in the existing. They've got kind of the little. I think there's some of those Victorian details there that are existing that you could bring out. Okay, usually they don't want us to. Yeah. That, that's that's why I'm just trying to understand what you guys are. So what your views are. I don't want to store size, but we want that. Influence and let's see what feels new, but okay, you might have like some of the similar height to like where the line is where the floor kind of sits at, like some of those details. Yes, yeah, so I mean, mine is much more plain, but all the heights match. I think sometimes trying to replicate the historic ornamentation was be problematic. Right. I think you're you're heading in a good direction in terms of responding to the massing and, and some of the offsets that then we start to see from that historic structure. Okay. Other observation is, would you consider instead of wood handrails outside of the porch extents, um, you know, looking at the materiality of the steps and that handrail, a lot of times it's kind of an outboard. So maintenance and durability and things like that sometimes get challenged. So just didn't know if some of those materials, if it wanted to be a wrought iron handrail, uh, you know, outside the extent of the porch, uh, so since it's undercut, you know, outside of cover. Yeah, so she just had her porch renovated not too long ago, and um, she used AZEC decking, um, which is what we're proposing here, so it matches the front porch. Um, and so that decking is, is weather resistant. Um, so again, you guys are kind of seeing opposite. So the existing steps are wood, and so um, to me, a rear porch is appropriate to be wood. I see stone a lot on the front steps, but on the back, I see a lot of wood steps. Completely, completely. Um, what about the handrail? The hammer. I, I mean, I think it's odd for a porch to have a wood guardrail and then a wrought iron handrail. It, to me, it should all be one element. Understand. You drive up and down Deal Avenue and you'll see it all day long. I think a lot of times is the railing on the front. But, but, uh, but what happens with the railing itself when the railing is not under cover and you go with wood, that is going to be a, a, a maintenance item. Right. And then it, what it does too is it starts to elevate it as a deck for a new element, a okay. new work element. Right. So I think a lot of times we probably try to keep the porches from being deck like or have a deck reference. So just something that can say. Right. Okay. Okay. So we've got proportions, materiality, and um, maybe addressing some porch elements to bring about some more, make it feel a little bit more Victorian. Anything else? Thank you. Thank okay. you very much. Thank you. All right. And just to make sure everybody else is here for 11:35 in the correct? Awesome.
I'm going to suggest a quick break. Um, our applicants look like they're in the hallway, but that allows me to uh, take a step out and then come right back in. So at this time, if anybody needs to stretch their legs, they can do so because it's going to be quick so we can get everything started for that. Microphone on. Is the microphone on? Um, so that microphone has a really good it we can move a little farther off, but I just if no one's going to need it, I just can Yeah. All right, commissioners, I know we've got two items under old business. Since one of them is an update, one of them is a voting item, we're going to take our voting item first. So that I figure I can run through the other item. So we are going to move on to application BB-21-03-0103. This is for 1135. The proposed work includes the variances for section 3312.49 parking. Six spaces are appointed and three are provided. And this includes new construction to construct a new facility to be on the side by side to house. And a new, I think it's three story. I think it actually went down to two when I had a typo there. Single family carriage house. I've included 
of the uh, minutes from the August 11th, 2021 hearing. And just to remind everybody, the previous variances that have been recommended are listed. So this includes use, lot length, density, fronting, and rear yard. Uh, the applicant submitted sample maps and historic age newspaper image of the dwelling, which illustrates that the proposed dwelling's custom does not match the historic structure. These standards for new construction state that new construction shall be brick when brick predominates in nearby structures. The surrounding street predominantly has brick head structures, though there are some brick structures. However, new construction should not be historicized, so a hardy side may be more appropriate than brick in the case if the applicant needs to put a more modern sign, especially with the original massing being recalled. Now, I do want to propose to the commissioners. Is the new roof massing appropriate? Uh, the width of the house came in a foot, so one variance is no longer needed. The carriage house height, carriage house height was reduced and the door was removed. Does this modification benefit any of the existing context? And if the hardy siding is retained, are there any additional details that are needed? Staff recommends approval of the application with the condition that the exterior material will be brick per city code 3116.12 new standards for new construction, specifically permit. Basis for recommendation is 3116.12 new standards for new construction, uh, specifically A, calling the building height, width, mass, and proportion, and that's the degree of compatibility between the new and old. And N, where brick predominates in a nearby structure, new construction shall be a brick. If brain predominates in nearby structures, then new construction shall be a frame. Where vacant land predominates, brick shall be preferred. Also, including the tour and building guidelines, but appropriate now it's not appropriate. Excellent. Um, go ahead and swear in our uh, applicants here. If you can state your name. Andrew Navarro. Mike Navarro. Brandon Do you swear from the testimony you gave to be the truth? Yeah, I do. Thank you. And then uh, I believe we have 20 speakers. Yes, so just a refresher the applicants and owners are going to be in for the board this morning. And so they'll present their materials, and then after they're done, we will go on to the registered speakers, which I've got five speakers. So if anybody else is missing the speakers, let's get back to you now. And then after the speakers, we'll go on to the commissioners. Excellent. We'll turn it over to you. Uh, anything to add to our staff report here today? Yes. So, um, first of all, thank you for your time, of course. Um, so, in last month's meeting, we said that our preference was to use a Hardy Bore siting for 1135 Neal Avenue. We have heard public comment that this is not the preferred material. However, we have found it um, based on city code 3116.12 standards for new construction and related guidelines that party board is appropriate for a new structure in a historic district. In addition, number four, under the amendments to the city of Columbus architectural review commission guidelines, exterior siting section states the proposed exterior cladding for the new structure must be consistent with the surrounding streetscapes and or the historic mix of brick versus frame in the existing neighborhood. We are glad that the neighboring public is engaged in this process, but we ask all to keep an open mind. Please also note that it is not advised within the Victorian Village Commission's guidelines or the secretary of the interior standards for the treatment of historic property guidelines to recreate a historic looking structure when constructing a new build in a historic neighborhood. A new build in a historic district, while it should be compatible with the neighboring homes, it is to serve as a timestamp of its own and should not be historicized or confused with the surrounding historic structures. Secretary standards state that we need to discern new from the old and inbuilt construction. The house we designed pays homage to the previous historic home and its unique sun porch that once stood on 1135 Neal Avenue, but
but it's not an exact copy of the home that once stood there, nor was the original home as grand as the neighboring homes on each side. As the National Trust for Historic Preservation has stated, community sediment and a preference for a particular architectural style can complicate or even negate agreed upon standards and guidelines. Lastly, preference and requirements are two different things as stated by the city attorney in a previous Victorian Village Commission meeting. Are we being held to the same standards as everyone else? This project has been compared to the Kaufman build several times, so I'm going to use that as an example. The Kaufman commercial building at 23 West 2nd Avenue was recently approved for mixed use of brick when brick clearly predominates all the way around 23 West 2nd Avenue. Yet the VVC recently approved the six to eight story development for on that site, where only the first two stories were brick and some swatches of brick were randomly added to upper stories which were clad for the most part with some kind of tin foil product. If brick predominated in the nearby structures, 23 West 2nd Avenue should have been a brick, not just partly or randomly a brick. I'd also like to read a letter that we received on September 1st, which we also submitted to the preservation office staff today. The letter reads, to VVC and Historic Preservation's office. I would like to take a minute to show my support for this new build at 1135 Neal Avenue. I have lived in the area for over 25 years, and this is by far the most scrutinized new build that I've seen in a while. This is not the Kaufman project. I have read the notes and watched the VVC August meeting, and this is by far not the same. This lot has been vacant for over 40 years, and all I see are people saying, no, 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 and they should be saying, finally, Someone is willing to develop this project without incentives, no tax abatement, especially in the time of materials double or triple in cost. One of the owners said he had to do brick for his build over 20 years ago. If they were talking about the brick house on 3rd and Neal Avenue, west north side, it is a terrible design. It does not fit in the neighborhood, but it moved forward. The one thing about trying to replicate or du duplicate a new brick home it will never have the same charm like the, the ones already on Neal Avenue. I looked at a new build in Italian Village and the premier Hamlet Street, and there is a hardy product house in between four brick homes to the north, seven bricks to the south, and a massive brick double across the street. And that home gets more compliments than the rest of the houses on the block. This is not the 1900s. Nobody wants these massive homes anymore. Our area is becoming more diverse and density is going to be a hot topic in the next five to, ten, five to 10 years due to more people moving to the suburb from the suburbs to our villages. Just looking at the amendment to the City of Columbus Architectural Review Commission guidelines 2005, it states HRC number four, the proposed exterior cladding for the new structure must be consistent with the surrounding streetscape and or the historic mix of brick versus frame in the existing neighborhood. Number five, multiple units being developed on a street or neighborhood as a whole must reflect the combination of brick and frame structures that exist throughout the neighborhood. Mike and Union have done some great work in the villages, Italian and Victorian, and that shows that they're part of the community, not just a developer. My husband and I finally fully support this project to moving forward and should not delay. Thank you for your time, Kathy and Ross Reinhardt. With that, I'm gonna defer to Bradley. The design changes that we made based on the commissioner's comments from the last month, we lessened the width of the house. So we no longer need the side yard, side yard setback variants. So now it is 35 feet wide and fits within the allowable zoning code. Uh, we removed the flat portion of the top of the roof and added a false front gable to the east peak to further echo the historic building massing that was there before. We removed the bedroom and a bathroom from the carriage house and removed both dormers, bringing down the massing as was recommended. Um, we updated the landscape plan and the Neal Avenue landscape plan, and we added historic sandborn maps for reference from 1922 and 1901 to the packet. 
what we are seeking is a vote for endorsement for the variance with parking and uh, endorsement and approval of the design packet as a whole. Excellent. And uh, we'll start off the first uh, public speaker. All right, I'm going to take these in order. I received them. So our first one is going to be at John Grinham. And I apologize for anybody whose name I don't pronounce correctly. And just as a reminder, everybody is doing that. And I want to add a little note based on some comments last time. We are all expected to behave in a professional manner. Profanity isn't tolerated. Hi, good uh, evening, everyone. Thanks for the opportunity to um, share our point of view. My partner Kevin and I live right next door to the property that we're discussing here today. And um, like all of the neighbors that have expressed concern about this not uh, being a brick building, um, we share that same concern. This property is in the middle of this block. It is sort of the center stage of our beautiful block on Leo Avenue, and um, all of the brick, all of the homes on this uh, on this side of the street, on the side of the street in discussion, you know, are brick, with the exception of one property, which does not reflect any of the code or any of the historical relevance. Um, so I know that the developers have referenced uh, properties across the street, a few properties across the street that are not brick. Those homes are tiny in comparison to the, the size of the home that's being proposed here. We also have a concern about four large trees. These are old growth trees that appear on or that exist on our property and on the developer's property. So right on the property line, we received a request from the developer to uh, uh, from the uh, um, the tree service asking us for access to our property so that all four trees could be removed. We've replied to um, send a letter to the uh, developers asking them to clarify a number of details about their removal. But most importantly, we've asked them to justify sort of why all four trees have to be removed. When we plot out the, uh, the uh, designs that have been submitted, it appears as if at least uh, two of those trees, and for certain, one of those trees could be salvaged or saved. Um, because they are in the middle of the backyard, our backyard and their backyard. We're really hoping that we can at least salvage one, possibly two of these trees, and we're looking for your support on that. Finally, the designs that were submitted today, or uh, yesterday that we saw, includes a wrought iron fence across the front of the property. Today, the, there's about 60 feet of wrought iron fence um, that also exists on the north side of the property, and perhaps the developer plans to retain that, but it, it looks like by the design, only the front portion of that ornamental wrought iron fence is actually going to be uh, saved. So we're asking the commission to clarify, will that uh, ornamental wrought iron fence, which is original and historic, will it be preserved? Will it be moved perhaps closer to the uh, property line, which we would support? But we really wanna make sure that that important detail is included and the design, and I, my apology to the developer if that is the plan, but I just want to make sure to clarify that um, because it's such an important detail. Thank you. And I have a picture, Kimberly, that I sent to you. I don't know if that's necessary or not to reference or if I'm allowed to reference it, but of um, the wrought iron, wrought iron fence. When did you send it? I sent it today, so it okay. may, be, may be too late. If you sent it at 3 p.m. or later, I was not able to see it. Then um, we have it for reference, perhaps in the two meeting. But thank you. Yeah. All right. And if I know I do have one photo we need to bring up, speakers, if you could remind me who that is before we start speaking, that would be appreciated. Um, next up is Andrew Gardner. And that was my photo. All right. Could have had it to the materials, but Nathan was fantastic. That's that. Or sorry, Nolan. I need to listen to the front of this. Here, could we swear our speaker in? Oh, yeah. I can state your name for the record. Andy Gardner. You swear or the testimony you give will be the truth and nothing but? I do. Thank you. Um, you know, these projects often take a long time as the developers try to maximize their investment by pushing the boundaries. Um, if they had bought an appropriate plan within the established rules code, this project would not still be on the agenda at these meetings. 
It was brought up last meeting that this process hasn't been fair to the applicant, but I feel there should also be fairness to the neighbors, neighborhood, and commission. At this point, it's about doing the right thing. I've either attended or listened to the previous meetings, and any mention of a different material has fallen on deaf ears. At the March meeting, Brick was brought up as, as the commission had general issues with party plank and certain projects. Then in May, materiality was brought up again, and the architects responded with, we're going to go forward with correction. Then in July and August meetings, you know, City Code 3116.22, Section N, which we've heard a lot about, which reads about where brick predominates in nearby structures, new construction shall be a brick. On the west side of Neal, between 3rd and 4th Avenue, there are 14 properties, of which 13 are brick and one is frame. Seems that this meets the standard of predominates. And so why are we continuing to have this discussion as to the material to be used? The applicant is pushing party pipe because it's cheaper, not what's appropriate for the build. Um, now, as for the carriage house, which you see, um, there has been multiple discussions of massing of the structure. The applicants lowered the building height approximately three feet, seven inches from the original plan for the July meeting. Then it was brought up again that the massing was still too big in July and August meetings. So they came back with removing one bedroom and removing a dormer from the east and west sides. I'm not sure how this changes the massing when in fact it's still the same length width and there are three floors. Actually, I feel they made it look worse by removing some of the architectural details. Across the alley from the proposed carriage house is an attractive two-story carriage home which fits nicely into the neighborhood. This is what a carriage house should look like, not a three, four kind of barn looking building. It's just too big. And what I've shown here is that to the one side of our property, there's a three story carriage house. And then this yellow one is just right across the alley from the proposed carriage house. And I just feel that the yellow home is much more in character with the neighborhood. Thank you. Okay, next up we have Mike Spencer. Well, Mr. Spencer, you swear or affirm the testimony that you have will be the truth and nothing but. Yep. Okay. Three minutes on the clock. I reside at 1123 Neal Avenue, one house removed from this proposed project on the same side of the street. You heard my story last month. A new construction house had to be brick and single family based on my contiguous neighbors. It doesn't matter what's across the street. It took me well over a year to go through this process with the commission, with many, many changes to my plans, and obviously at my cost. You do it right, no matter how long it takes. We were told last month that the developer absolutely could not build what they wanted without the side yard variance. Now, miraculously, they do not need the side yard variance this month. Why do they need a parking variance? Because they are trying to shoehorn way too many bedrooms onto a site. In their September 2nd letter, they tried to defend their density by bringing up climate change. What? I did not receive a parking variance. Do not support a parking variance. These parking requirements have been set by the city engineers for a reason. The developer is providing half of the parking that is required. That is not acceptable. Keep hearing about the site is zoned for up to four units. That is the same 1978 R4 zoning for all the single family homes around the site. That zoning is for up to four units in a single building. The developer will still need its zoning variance for two detached buildings, each with living quarters on a single lot. At the August meeting, and again, Kimberly said it tonight. Well, first, you said last meeting cost should not be a consideration in this process, obviously. And then she reiter reiterated the code, and where brick predominates, it should be with brick. She also said last month, most of the street is brick, this should be brick as well. And by the way, the most weather resistant siding for climate change is brick. Remember the famous story of the three little pigs. 
developer claims that they want to be part of this community, yet they haven't considered the code and the feedback that they are receiving from this community. Have you heard from even one person come before you who is in favor of this project? Besides a weak letter from a friend who doesn't know history or architecture, that person should stay in a tiny village. It's blatantly obvious that this project doesn't fit in with the single family brick homes all around it. And they want a massive sun porch on Neil Avenue that is grossly out of touch with our block. There are no sun porches on our block. The developer recently said that they have had conflicting feedback. Let's make it crystal clear to them. Please, when you get the chance, uphold your oath and vote no on these proposed materials, vote no on any parking variances. Or an ending to this effort. Not twice. No, we have three minutes on the clock for when we start. Oh, we have three minutes on the clock for when you start. Uh, there's a few points I just want to make. Sure. You know, in the code has given clear direction. That the downloads were. I know this commission has struggled with that issue. Um, Developers want to say that you changed your position and you haven't really. <clears throat> they can quibble about the fact that you know, some blocks, it might be more tolerable. This is a particularly unique block where it's almost all brick, as it pointed out a couple of times. <clears throat> and that the code is so explicitly clear when, that it requires the commonality. And I don't know how this commission could change that. Not complying with that. The developer could do this. Putting in brick will cost them more. They bought a very expensive lot. They're trying to build a very expensive property, and we only get one try at building this building, and it's going to be there for a hundred years. <clears throat> we need to do it right the first time. They've got to spend more to build it, and they need to do that. The mission shouldn't let their financial concerns interfere with their building their duty, your duty. For the neighbors, the neighborhood, and to your home. <clears throat> I live directly across the street from the Brick House. And 20 years ago, my slate roof was in serious trouble. And I needed to replace the slate roof. And because of the commission's requirements, I replaced it with a slate roof, a new slate roof. I spent over $70,000 to do that. The commission required that I do that. I did that. They spent an additional amount to put brick on this house. I'm sure. There are other requirements too, like the parking variance. They're a people concern, but the brick is one that's going to last and stick with us for a long time. That's in my mind the most important right now that we get that resolved once and for all. The developer may do a nice house after all, but it will be nice if it is nicer and it will be more appropriate. Thank you. The last one I have is Scott Mitchell's. That's all right. Don't worry about it. Nobody ever gets it right. <laughs> I'm the first try, right? Scott Mitchell's rocker. Thanks for referring the testimony you gave to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but. I do. Thank you very much. We'll have uh, three minutes from you. Okay. In my letter to the commission dated August 17th, I stated my objections to this project. I stand by those comments and his objections. I would like to add a few additional thoughts and comments. My wife and I purchased our home in 1998, our first home just outside the village in the West Second. We live at 1103 Neal Avenue five houses away from this project. We put countless hours and a not inconsequential sum into restoring our historic home. We raised our family here. Our twin boys both now attended college. Our home on second was on the Victorian Village tour in 1995. Our current home was on tour twice, 1998 as in process, and again in 2004 when completed. 
mention this only to illustrate that we aren't a couple of NIMBYs fighting anything new or different. We have lived, worked, and belonged to this community for over 25 years. Neil Avenue it is, in my mind, a special situation. I've watched the density around us change the makeup of our neighborhood. Heavier, faster traffic on many of our neighborhood streets, city parking regulations, and other demographic changes. Neal Avenue has remained essentially the same these 20 some years. With the rare exception of a few rentals, I happen to live next door to the ugliest house in the neighborhood. Um, <laughs> the homes retain their historic beauty and differences. Yes, houses change ownership, but the neighbors who live on Neal, in my opinion, care about the historic nature of our street. Countless times when strangers, when we meet here where we live, the comments are invariably about how beautiful Neal Avenue is. And not against the new home at 1135 Neal Avenue. I would welcome new neighbors. We do not want or need any short-term rental properties. And we adamantly oppose any parking. That was our last speaker. Appreciate all the public comment. Um, where do we want to go from here? <laughs> uh, I see uh, a couple of requests for looking at the roof massing, looking at the carriage house, looking at the materiality of it. The final parking areas. Uh, so I think we've got four areas uh, to kind of start to look at. Uh, I don't know if there's a preference to start somewhere there. Um, start with material. Add oh. right into the big one. Yeah. Rip off the band aid. Yeah. Uh, I think maybe I I brought up. Uh, just maybe challenging ourselves to break down the rule for or like based on surroundings. A couple key words popped out to me during sharing one from the applicants in terms of historic mix. Consider, um, but then the, you know, the counterpoint to that of the uh, condition of this. So I, you know, I see arguments sides. Historic mix, I think, is a, in my opinion, is something that makes you know, vibrant. Um, but I also recognize that this particular block, especially the centerpiece of the block, the dead center of the block. Um, does maybe call for um, more scrutiny in terms of thinking of it in, in micro scale versus macro scale. So I, I, I think I personally am coming around more to the opinion of brick being the appropriate material in this location. So um, materiality wise, I think I was pretty clear. Um, I think at the beginning, I think that uh, one of the commissioners had mentioned early on of, you know, is, um, you know, is, is brick the, the right choice or if there's an alternate material and can that alternate material, so to speak, uh, have the, the certain sense of presence or carry the sense of presence that it needs to kind of fill in the missing tooth that has been kind of dubbed for the site. Um, I'm always open uh, from my standpoint because it's really tough to to say no to something without at least offering the, the team an opportunity to explore it and, and to present it. Uh, so um, so early on, I think I probably said, hey, yeah, I that makes sense. Let's, let's, let's see what see what it accomplished, see what the result thing is. So uh, but I think pretty clearly last month I, I pro, you know I spoke pretty clearly about what the materiality based upon what the current condition looks like and what the result is that it should be bring. From that perspective, so I still feel that I'm in alignment with the, the staff's recommendations from that perspective. 
of maintaining that brick and the integrity of that for this particular block. And it's really based upon the results, you know, is what I'm what I'm what I'm looking at in, in that regard. So uh, I feel as though that the the brick is the right right choice. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll echo my uh, fellow commissioners here as well. Um, I appreciate the efforts and the iterations on uh, looking at the post frame. Um, I believe early on in this process, I said that you know I would be open to it. It's uh, as we've refined this and gotten it further along, I just find it not to be um, appropriate into the, the area for what we can get out of it. And um, I tend to agree also with Tim and the hyper scrutiny of the dead center of just blog. Um, so, uh, yeah, I would follow with the uh, staff approval or staff recommendation rather than the uh, 3116 12 for uh, going with Brick on this board. So, can, can we say something? Um, so, I, I think what we've been trying to do is we're trying to build within the guidelines, within the city code. And several months before, we were advised that we could go either direction. And we set our preference as, hey, we're going to go with the Hardy Board siting. And we spent months and months improving and making changes on one design that had Hardy Board siting. And now I'm hearing because your preference is that is for brick, which I, I can understand that side too. But I'm hearing, oh, our preference is this. And the expectation is for us to go back and redesign the house. But I think for us, since we have spent months and months doing this design, is our question is we we looked closely at the code and we are trying to, to design this house within the confines of the city code and the Victorian Village guidelines. So I hear your preference is for brick, but I'm asking, and I think we're all asking. Or is our design within the guidelines? And I'm I'm specifically re referencing the city code 316.12 that says I do have it here verbatim. N where brick predominates in nearby structures, new construction shall be a brick. If frame predominates in nearby structures, then new construction shall be a frame. Where vacant land predominates, brick shall be preferred. So I'm looking at the wording here, if frame predominates in nearby structures, and the same goes for if brick predominates in nearby structures. I've looked at the code, it nearby is not defined. So if you look at the dictionary term for nearby, it says the back alleyway. It says proximity. It, it talks about distance and proximity. So if we took a circle around that lot, then we're going to hit a lot of frame structures, and it is predominantly frame structures. It also does not define what a structure is. It doesn't define a structure as a residential, a main residential structure. So now we're talking about structures also include garages, carriage houses. So again, if you're gonna draw a circle, a radius around that property, now that we're gonna fall into the same category of frame is predominating around 1135 Neal Avenue. And more points. Sure. We actually spent quite a bit of time reviewing the commissioner's comments and staff reports from months past and at this for about 18 months so far. And in March of this year, staff recommended approval of siting and frame with the caveat that we provide specific paint information as we move forward. And that's why we were so caught off guard last month with staff changing their mind and saying now they want to 
So since March, we've been moving forward with Hardy and Brown and you guys staff recommended approval. The feedback we got from the commission said Hardy, Brown. And, and in the August business meeting, we were asked to provide detailed landscaping, which I thought was asking for feedback on, okay, what else is, what else is going into the design as an entirety? And we submitted that, and then we didn't hear anything. We didn't hear any feedback after that. And we showed up to the August meeting, and the, the direction, we were just put off course. And it's like, okay, well, um, I at least expected some feedback on, it. I just felt like we were blindsided, just in general. And if you want to talk about community, five neighbors is not the community. You know, if they, they can voice their concerns, they can voice their input, we will gladly take it. But for five people just to just throw same rhetoric over and over again is not going to get us to where we feel this product or this house is going to go. So I think your ultimate question, just to just to cut to the chase is, um, I want to know, it, is this build not within the code? Is it not meeting the code requirements? We will, yes, we want a yes or no, no answer. So for me, I'm, I'm looking at item nine or item N as you reference, and the staff recommendation is break based upon 30, 31, 16.12 item N. And the wording of that is, is brick. And so that's what I'm that that that's what I'm leaning towards. So so yes. Even though that I the code doesn't define nearby, it doesn't define structure. Completely. Completely. Because I think it as it relates to like structures, comparing carriage houses for carriage houses, comparing porches to porches, comparing the texture of this item element to element, not necessarily saying a one or two story or two and a half or a three story home against Right. You know, a carriage house that may be a back or a secondary structure. I mean, there are a lot of, you know, when you really look at the fabric of the neighborhood, there are a lot of different degrees in terms of what, you know, hierarchies of different homes. And that's what makes it so rich, right? So you're not necessarily going to replicate, you know, a garage that is a secondary tertiary structure and actually apply the same level of detail and consider it appropriate as a, as a you know, two and a half, three story home. That 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 flanks new land. It, that that wouldn't be appropriate to try to take those details and apply those details to a carriage house or to a one story garage. So I think what you're it, the whole idea about a circle. I don't think this is necessarily relevant because you have to have like like for like in terms of structure to structure. Right, a garage against a garage, a carriage house against a carriage house. It's very ambiguous, though, because but, on that on that block, then, there is there's the highest amount of wood structure. So, and it was said repeatedly by the HPO that since we were replicating, we were mimicking the same massing as the historic structure that was once on the lot, that it may be appropriate to use a different siting. So, so interesting enough is is the maybe. Right, so I think that you opened up your first argument with an understanding that kind of was that we misled you or that someone misled you. So, um, so if we take a step back and I just want to address that one comment first, though, because I don't think in this process you've been misled. I don't think so. If I think about even today's applications, there's multiple applications that are very, very complex. This is not a one line linear, so to speak, solution, right? So it would be probably unfair for the collective group to say that uh, a wood frame home, there's no way possible that that could ever happen. That that would be unfair to you guys, right? Being able to understand the merits of what design solution comes forward, I think that's what we were responding to. So early on, if we said, no, brick is brick, done, and that's it, that's fine. Then we would have had a brick solution. But at the same time, you wouldn't have been able to explore if a wood frame could, so to speak, hold, hold its weight according to the design to be able to be appropriate in this location. Completely. It, it, it's, it's, I mean, there's multiple projects 
that have had to take that pivot because of the resultant didn't result to something that would be considered appropriate. And so the guidelines state that this process should not be onerous applicant. And it, it really is if you're telling us repeatedly in consecutive meetings, there is there is we were given the, that direction verbally. Yes, this is a suitable option and you may pursue it. And we, we gave that communication right back. I'm, I'm going to speak for myself at this moment. I don't think I've ever given an and absolute. Not, okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're, we're talking about uh, we're just, Commissioner Siwoo. Uh, we're talking about. Uh, commissioner Deck, the there's Every other commissioners okay. that gave it. So your opinion, which is which is warranted, yes, sir. should not outweigh what has happened in the past. I understand, but my 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 vote, my my I only can give you the feedback that I personally am hearing, the dialogue that I'm hearing, and I'm, the things that I'm saying. And then, so I, I don't want to sort of speak. I don't I don't speak for all of us, but at the same time, I don't think that it's a fair statement. To say that this commission or the staff misled you, I, I think that all of us are here to help right. and probably yield the best product and the best project. Yeah. Not necessarily for 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 just the neighborhood, not necessarily for just the commission, not necessarily just for the HPO, but also for you guys as well. I mean, all of us are sort of speaking this together. So, just to be able to say misled, I, I just I just think that that's unfair. I think there's been a very good sense okay. of collaboration to get to this point. And and so that's that, that's that's, that's I just want to address that. Forward, and I can relook at that because I've spent a lot of time reviewing. Yes, ma'am. And I've spent a lot of time looking at the code because we don't want to go down the rabbit hole if it's if it's if it doesn't need to be done, and that's kind of what it feels like what we have done, and it feels like we've been a little bit blindsided, and so now I'm like, well, now I have to look at the code, and I have to interpret it. And look at the difference between shall and prefer, or you know, what's a preference and a requirement, and look at the wording. And that's normally I would not want to have to do that, but that's what I've been spending my time doing. I think so. Please, if I'm misinterpreting this code, please tell me um, that this design does not meet the code or the guidelines. There's a lot of wording in those guidelines and the amendments that state. So, yeah, so, either so we're asking, so our question to you guys is, is this house not in the guidelines? For me, I think I've already answered that question in, in terms of my. Okay, so, so you said no. Yes. Well, you said this house is not in the guidelines. Yeah, for the materiality, 3116. Let's move on to the next. Uh, you said there's four, right? Yeah. Um, so we had uh, the new carriage house uh, provisions. You want to start there? Same. So correct me if I'm wrong. We removed the two dormers. On the carriage house, yes. Remove one bedroom from yes. the program. Was there any change to height? Uh, the overall height didn't change. The commissioners were questioning the number of bedrooms on the site, which is why. Okay. So it's still a two and a half story structure. Yes. So, so my comment related to the carriage house last time was more so about overall program. We were, if I remember correctly, and, and, and again, if, please correct me if I'm misstating my comments from last time. I think we were looking at the overall programming for the house, the home, looking at it against the variances as well as the massing of the carriage house. A lot of times with these projects, if you know, in order to push and squeeze, you only can do that so much before the program has to be altered or revised. Completely understandable that there was maybe some adjustments 
but the character um, in terms of yeah, the character related to the carriage house seemed like that was, so to speak, the sacrifice unless it, and not necessarily pro. Um, I thought we were looking in the story of one and a half stories, something of that nature to be able to get to a traditional carriage house, one and a half stories to be able to get. And I, again, I don't know if the result is in terms of program, but I thought that that's where we were headed, not necessarily trying to resolve by just reducing the character associated with it. So I think the scale of this thing being three cars, if this was a two car element, something of that nature, then I think it probably could start to be less, you know, less dormer or something, but I think it still deserves, um, you know, maybe some understanding of character, but probably the massing would probably need to come in out of that one, one and a, on that one and a half story um, to sort of, to balance that. So the the property that um, to us to the north is is that something that's why like we can reduce it by two feet three inches to mimic the the size? It, it's on the the plans or uh, B two two point four. Right there. So, so, yeah, so, yeah, so the one, the one to your left, uh, yeah. that one's at 28, 28 feet. I guess, I guess what we're trying to do is trying to get in the same, I guess, height between that one and then the one towards the south. Yeah, and I, I just think if I, if I look at the, not necessarily the overall height, because that building, the ridge line, the ridge line itself, Maybe a resultant of you know the the mass the depth things of that nature. So, but I'm I'm more so looking at just you know looking at the location of of, of the eave and how that that eave line or soffit line kind of translates and it kind of gives that appearance of a one and a half story. It may be you know one and a half and maybe the first floor is a little bit more robust or or something of that nature than what you're seeing here. But it really takes on the character of something that's more vertical. You know. It, Yours, or I should say, the two-story approach takes on something that's a lot more vertical, and it's proportion. And I mean, so, is there a possibility of being able to bring that ridge line down, bring that soffit line down, and express it as a one and a half story? And whatever the program is, is what the program is. I think that hopefully that's clear in terms yep. of what my colleagues so. were last time. Okay. I would, I would echo Sean's comments. I think the, uh, the loss of the dormer actually lost some of the character and the detail in there. I understand what you guys are trying to do with that, but I think, I think bringing some of that back would be helpful for, uh, for the overall design. Uh, nothing additional for the house. Uh, for the main house, we have the, uh, this was the updated root massing and footprint change. So I guess we'd be looking at the uh, new roof uh, lines and mass. Um, and it did shrink the footprint, so we lost the side yard areas. Just uh, I, I can start. Um, so appreciate obviously the exploration of being able to see if you could fit the program in uh, overall width wise without the variances. Um, so appreciate that. Uh, it does appear that at least some of the comments that. Um, the commission and the staff in the neighborhood were um, making uh, over the last two months there are some of those items are starting to be implemented so uh, again i just i want to make sure that you know that we are recognizing those positives for instance representing the back addressing the back you know with the hood sometime an understanding of what the back is or at least giving some attention to the back um, 
trying to uh, kind of squeeze it in again, breaking the roof down to try to get that more vertical portion on the home. Um, so appreciate all of those elements. Um, again, it's just it's 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 the materiality. So right now, in terms of you know, if I look at the the front porch, the front porch, there's a lot of grandeur uh, associated with it, which I, I think the detailing and, and and such is there's been a lot of detail and time spent. But if that was to apply to a brick structure, I, I think that it would be able to hold its weight. Right now, the porch, the front porch seems a, a little heavy as it relates to a wood frame. Uh, but I know that that's the that's the goal of trying to at least you know allow its architecture to sort of speak fit and be that missing tooth in, in the overall Neil Avenue block. Um, the back. As far as the back porch, looking at some of the detailing, um, you know, the how the box, the box gutters or the gutter kind of steps, it has a more, uh, I should say, more uh, on one side of, of the plan. So I'm looking at the, the main house south elevation and I'm kind of comparing the, the front against the back. The front, the detailing is really trying to fit into the neighborhood and then the back seems like that may be a new build within the neighborhood. And so, yeah, you know, of course it is. Um, which it is. Oh, understandable. All right. And that's understandable. I'm just looking at some of the details on the socket lines, things like that, that, you know, just, just looking at those elements, uh, I think would be uh, very helpful um, as you continue. Um, I think that's, that's all the comments that I, I, I have. Yeah, in terms of the uh, the changes for the roof, the, the that missing is much better fitting in now with the, with the uh, overall massing of the building. Um, do appreciate the effort to resize the building for uh, uh, one less variance for this project. Um, in terms of that programming, I think that was a good exercise as well. And yeah, and I go uh, Sean's comments. Uh, you know, just a little bit more work onto the rear of the structure there, I think will help out. Um, just in terms of bumping up the detailing on that uh, to kind of more in line match with the front of the building itself. Um, but yeah, in terms of the roof massing and the overall massing, I think we're in good shape. Yeah, I'll echo appreciation for the sidebar side yard setback. This thing is feeling pretty good to me. I, I, I think it'll be interesting to see maybe a color study of the elevation, especially as the explored of especially that the, the upper level feels feels heavy against in, in this GD drawing, but be easier to evaluate once we see it contrast with material. And actually something that stands out you know, and which I, I understand is a is is code driven, but the, the height of that having more presence of weight, you know, it's taller than the in the, the balcony on the, the first level. I think that's maybe that's jumping out a little bit in terms of getting kind of heavy. In terms of the railing on the second level? Yeah. Trying to get the wall. Is there a way to address being able to echo the previous you know, image that gave you guys inspiration without offering that amenity, given the concern with the second floor, you know, umbrellas and things of that nature that could potentially, you know, start to yield themselves on that on that floor. The sun porch. Yeah, the sun porch. Okay. Because there are expectations. I expect that. Anyway, just respect. Go ahead. Yes. That people generally conduct themselves and and there's a lot of home ownership pride on neil avenue 
I mean, these are high end condos. The person that's going to buy that, I mean, I, I'm just putting it out there. Um, I mean, we live in a town village, like we see it everywhere. And these aren't going to be slum lower. Like we're, there's no, I, I just don't understand the, the concern of having a sun porch. We're, we're mirroring what used to be there. So if that house didn't burn down, there would be a sun porch there. And it's a rare thing. And I think it should be celebrated not looked down at or worrying about what could happen. It's very rare. Like I walked up and down the street. There's hardly any sun porches that are intact or they have a, um, the porch was, you can see a door on the second floor, but the porch is gone. There's probably only like six, I think in that general area that's intact. So that we have one house that has it, it's a it's a rental, and it's 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 not it's unsightly. But you know what? That historic building is still there, and someday that landlord will sell it, and someday it'll be renovated, and it'll be a beautiful sun porch. But we're not we're not tearing down the cottages because it's one. A couple of them are dilapidated. No, they're 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 renovated, and now they're little treasures because we only have a handful of cottages. So I think the sun porch should be. Should, should stay there. I think it's a great that we want to kind of mirror something that was previously there, which a lot of developers would not do. So I think we should that should be celebrated. It was just an item that hasn't been talked about. So I was just trying yeah, to no, I, discussion. I'm glad we did bring it up because I, just, I, had, I did want to that allowed for more conversation on the sun board. Yeah. Hasn't. Yeah. It was well, just it happened. Happened. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm just going to say bring up the historic project. Reference. I'm, I'm glad you did that because I think that maybe falls back to the the challenge I'm having with the scale of it. That you're trying, you know, trying to bring it up to modern day code. Uh, it's it's forcing some some I think scale proportion things that that deviate a little bit from the historic character of that. So I think that in my mind that it's the challenge is it's solving that problem, yes. not so much the fact that it's there. And there are some there are some homes on on Neil that they don't have access to that element. Mm -hmm. So it appears from the streetscape that it is a sun scorch, but you don't really truly really have physical access out there. Um, so there are a couple of homes in that regard. So some of your 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 multi multi families and such they do, you know they do have uh, that. Um, but there are some that they don't, and it's just the the presentation and the working through the proportion, the celebration yeah. of the porch itself. That is the amenity to end it, to, to help the streetscape versus it being an amenity, so to speak, for the resident. So just yeah, and there's so, a difference between some of the faux sun porches yes, and mean. the real sun porches, which yes, this is one with the like one we're mimicking from the historic building. The last one was experience of parking variants, I think is our last. Uh, I also do want to touch on the, the landscape. Um, again, appreciate that you provided the plan, uh, I think especially in, in reference to some of the comments that were made. Uh, I would ask that you um, to at least see where those existing trees are on the plan um, so we can see their relationship to the new structure. And if there are you know, one or two that we are able to maintain, like they kind of understand that. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, I think one of the obstacles is it becoming a risk sure. um, of the tree falling because it's not just the root structure that could be compromised. It's also the tree canopy um, that is going to be affected on our side because we've already had end up um, planning meetings on with framers and they said that that's that some of the canopy is going to have to go. So. Yeah, we, yeah. we definitely can add that to the yeah. it, it, any impact to the root zones of those trees is going to create a potential. It's just like to understand, you know, are we how close are we? Is is yeah. there one that is, is safe or could be saved? And in addition to that, understanding uh, the result of that, you know, is there a supplement to to that material that was there in terms of providing screening those trees in that location? Would you mind, Chair, just talking about the ornamental fence too? I think you know one of the since we're on landscaping from right, right now is ornamental fence that was kind of talked about 
And I think that that's kind of one of the items that, you know, just kind of, I think that the team has a certain sensitivity of being able to pull this off, of being able to understand how the new product, so to speak, sits within the old. Uh, a lot of times, citing doesn't really, a site team doesn't really come into play. It's just, we need to get five feet on this side, we need to get five feet on this side, and that's what we need to do. So it would be interesting to understand from a site perspective of where this house should sit as it relates to, you know, some of these existing elements, you know, tree, the trees that have been talked about, the existing ornamental offenses, you know, and being able to maintain that, I think that would be probably, you know, it would, it would, it would be a, a good nod of being able to restore or at least preserve well, some of those. I'm not destroying a very expensive old but, iron fence, but, absolutely not, but, but um, I believe that the iron fence was on is on the property line so that's something that we have to look at because the our neighbors comments kind of stated like he said he um would like that to move closer to the property line so i don't know what that comments about but um we intended to that was just oversight not including it on oh, no the plan but yeah the side fence will stay intact as the center but we are we have to as we talked about in a previous meeting, that we have to center that opening to the iron fence. So just being able to represent those and kind of, you know, in the plans, I think it would just be just helpful for the conversation. Yeah, call on Thank you. And, uh, no more on landscape. Uh, we'll move on to the one variance, 33-12-49. Uh, which is our parking variance. Uh, currently, they are providing the three spaces in the carriage house. Uh, 33-12-49 would require six spaces. Just to reiterate from our previous, we, we were trying to accommodate the parking spaces. I, I, Commissioner Skinner, um, we have the, the, the carriage house pushed up toward towards the house, um, but during the meetings they wanted it closer, so it will be on the same, same, uh, same line. So that's why we're requiring those parking. Thank you. And the parking variance is not based on number of bedrooms; it's based on number of use or use. And um, the commission has given endorsement for the use variance that we asked for. So this parking variance is in line with that as well. Can you, can you explain that a little bit right now? So, so currently, so right now we have, is it two that's required per each dwelling? Yes. So two for the carriage house, two for the right unit and the or south unit and the north unit. Correct. Correct. That has nothing to do with program. That's just in general. So if I was building a two car garage or you know two car two garage or two car carriage house, and it had you know one studio, it would be two spaces that would be required for that dwelling unit. Yes. That helps helps clarify. Okay. Any more? Questions for variances. Personally. Yeah. Um, I don't have any more questions on the, the variance either. And I understand where it's coming from and why we push the uh, the carriage house back. I think that's a, an improvement for the, the alleyway design there. Um, yeah. Do you have any thoughts? Yeah. It doesn't seem uncommon. Right. And for that area. For sure. Yeah. Good point. Um, well, I think we hit the uh, five major areas here uh, for materiality, the carriage house, the main house, roof and massing, landscape, and our parking variance. Um, one of you want to try a motion or do we want to continue and come back so to a special meeting if we need to before we get 
to at the motion so I would like to suggest that we break this up into like A, B, C, or A, B, or what, whatever. Because mm -hmm. the applicants are asking for a vote, there are some things that might make sense to approve, recommend, to deny, or continue. Mm -hmm. So do we want to start from the bottom up and start with that parking variance? Sure. Do we want to group the parking variance with anything? Well, the parking variance doesn't need recommend it, so maybe it's appropriate just to leave that on its own. Are we defaulting to that rep token? I was going to try to dis, I was, I just, as a courtesy, given the feedback that was offered today, what would they like to see? That's that's all I just saw. Ken, I think that's a pretty suggestion to break this up with variance as a standalone, perhaps the carriage house as a standalone, the main house as a standalone. Okay. Break it up into a way that the commission feels fits. Either we put in endorsements or denial or table mm -hmm. based on specific elements. I'm going to leave it up to you guys to figure out how to break this up. Now, keep in mind, we do have denials. We need to give city code about it. I do have a handy handy pamphlet. You've got it on your staff reports too. So maybe we want to start off with some of the easier things that aren't going to take such hefty explanation. Nick, take me something. Do you want to start with parking minutes? Processing in my head, trying to understand what what we move forward with and how that hurts the process more than helps the process. That's all. That's what I'm, that's where my head is at. So sometimes there are moments where it helps and it helps move this thing along. But given the feedback today, I'm struggling with trying to understand by breaking it apart. How does that benefit? Not necessarily us. It's more so you. That that's that's all. Sure. Uh, really, if I can answer, uh, yes. schedule wise, it does help us because we had uh, received endorsements for the other variances. So we can move forward with the council, uh, city council variance process, which takes quite a bit of time to get on their agenda and get their approval and so forth. While we continue to work through the process of mass and materiality and the things that we have discussed today. Yeah. And I will add, as I know, building and zoning that we have to get. And in line through this beforehand. So, as opposed to our local review process, it's a lot more time with them. Mm -hmm. And the applicants are kind of expected to work in tangent with historic preservation commissions to make sure they have their variances for when they get in front of. So, at this stage, you just keep it simple with just the variance and project, just those two. Items right now, or do we do we want to break, break down any further? Are you talking about like splitting the, the main house and the parish house? Yeah, do we not split that right now because we're still asking for more evolution, for more evolution on material and things like that? Yeah, what are, the, what are the what are the previously recommended variances? You know, just kind of. I don't recall, and then again, I I'm we, um, consistently I'm not here. Okay. They are use, which involves the accessory unit, lot width, which is 50 foot minimum, 45 feet provided, density 7500 minimum, and 60 75 provided. Uh, fronting um, with the carriage house, the unit C is the front alley. And the rear yard again for the carriage house, the 270 square foot or 3% proposed, which okay. um, I just want to say thank you, Bradley, for giving this to me so that was a quick access one. Sure. Okay. So, those are, let's just say, for instance, if there was any project that we were, you know, if there was an existing home and we were building a carriage house, these are all related to, I'm sorry, no, this is a result of that lot being split off from that perspective, too. And it, right, so the, the lot itself is only 45 feet. Yeah, some some code. of those to make the lot meet the zoning code. Yes. Even if it's an existing condition, we get a variance for that to make it technically leak code. Yes. So the only remaining item tonight is the parking variance, which hasn't been addressed. That would allow them to go ahead and move forward. Understandable. 
I appreciate you guys allowing us to talk it through. So, I mean, I feel I feel comfortable from from that perspective. Just I mean, that's me personally. On 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 the parking various piece. I'm taking it. You're comfortable voting. That's correct. That's correct. I'm I'm comfortable voting and breaking that piece out as something separate than the balance of the project right now. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you want to make that want to motion? Uh, a motion to recommend uh, the proposed parking variance um, to align with the previously recommended variances. Second. Second. Uh, further discussion? Uh, vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? So we'll move forward with the uh, parking variance. Um, or the remainder of the building or the carriage house. Um, sounds like we probably want to do a continuous. Well, or look at an individual item or move this to a special meeting. Would we want to, let's say, go back up to look at the landscaping and see if we want to to not continue that, then look at the greenhouse roof massing and footprint as same thing for that, and then look at the house material. I think the biggest thing a uh, disagreement on the house material. Mm -hmm. I don't think we can continue that. I think we need to act on that tonight mm -hmm. because that also affects the rest of the design as well. So for the house material, uh, breaking that out separately. Uh, it's are they asking for are they asking for that vote of us breaking that down? For the for the material, we'll okay. we'll, we'll take a vote on, on the material. Yeah. I just wanted to be sure. Okay. Yeah, but we'll, we'll 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 still have the house that we can we can set for for next month. But as far as materials, we do want a a vote for approval or disapproval. Okay. And that way we can always agree with the carriage house landscaping and passing elements as I am need to do that separately. Okay. Um, so for the house material? So for house material, so um, let's see, uh, for VV 21030110B uh, for 1135 Neal Avenue, uh, a vote for, um, or I'm sorry, um, a motion to approve uh, as submitted for the main house material to the um, party board site. Second. Okay. Further discussion? Uh, vote. All those in favor? All those opposed? Aye. Uh, and that would be 31 16 12 N. Site where brick predominates nearby structures, new construction shall be of brick. Or anything from new construction, just to make sure I have a handout. I'm fine citing 3116 unless you guys have an issue or want to look at any other section. Yeah, to keep it simple. I just yeah. All right. And as normal as something is denied it with the rest of this process, I will be mailing out the denial documents, which will include an appeals application. So you could take a look at that. And if you want to appeal process, you've got 10 days from when you get my email. So just a heads up. And it has, it has all information. Yes. Okay. It's got the reasons for appeal as well. I think it's and it's been a while since I've said that I've sent out that denial document. I think it's got kind of like some of the documents you need to hit. Thanks. Yeah, we need to and then continue the rest. Or yeah, continue the rest. Is that yes, it will we'll continue the rest. Okay, so, so that would we'll be um, we'll submit um, new plans for next month. Okay, so that would be the carriage house, main house, massing, and landscape. Okay. 
So I make a motion for VV 2103010B for 1135 Neal Avenue uh, for the balance uh, of the proposed project to be continued. Further discussion? And none vote. Uh, all those in favor of continuing? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Um, just one caveat. Hopefully, we're first, not last. I, I guarantee it nothing. <laughs> um, the uh, agendas are always set up with staff recommended. Yeah. With the idea that staff recommended are going to be off to business meeting. They are not always because the commissioner doesn't have questions or have something to do with the applications and continued applications of investigating. Okay. Yeah, our our only concern is having a full and thankfully we did. Uh, I was slightly concerned about that as well. That the commissioners were able to say. Thank you no, very much. Yeah. I appreciate it. So, thank you so much. Thank you for working with us. We appreciate it, guys. Thank you. Thanks. Um, we have one other old business. Yes. Yes, we do. Real quick, because I was thinking. We had a motion to adjourn the meeting. So, our old business item. We have an update on the Columbia gas. They are doing a little bit more work in the Torian Village and in the town village. So they are implementing the same type of work that's been previously performed over the last few years. They're replacing the main gas line system in the road right of way and then replacing each individual line on each of the properties. And they will be contacting all residents affected. Um, as is occasionally noted in Italian Village, uh, residents can talk with the gas representative. So if there is the option to say put it on the side as opposed to the front, that can be explored. Some buildings don't necessarily have that option, like rural houses, it gets a little bit difficult. But I just want to have that on the record because it's been discussed over in Italian. So Wanted to mention it here as well, but I wanted to make that quick update because it does affect our. Okay, that's all. awesome. Uh, can we get a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second. So moved. Thank you. Okay. Thank you guys. This ran a little later than I thought it would, but it's okay. <laughs> we flew off the subject. Good to go. Yeah, but that happens that conceptions can take a little bit more than you further this. Yeah. Are we off, no one?